what's happening good people we are back again i know i know y'all wondering like what happened and i i, I ain't gonna yeah. talk bad about this because before we got went off before we got knocked off we're gonna blame it on the feds but um always <laughs> always exactly happened to pop up so we like hey we're gonna go ahead and uh get this thing started let's give the folks a little bit of time to come in mm -hmm. and get them back on i'm gonna take yeah. us off the screen we're gonna do a proper intro and we're gonna do it oh. one more time you're yes, checking sir. out RS TV. Act like you know. If you're just logging in, act like we just started. And um, we, we live and direct. We'll see you on a few ticks. Stand by. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are here. Grandma used to pray, oh, Lord, please save him from the evil snares and all the dangers that entangle. Yeah, though they walk in through the valley of the shadows, just prepare and make them fit for every battle because but I know they're bound to come. And I know they bound to fall, but in your bounty, Lord, preserve their beautiful home. Right. We still surviving and offer grandma's prayers. Surrounded by the jungle and the lion's den. Tread light, cause these traps is inconspicuous. They hide right in plain sight. Thinking we don't see them when they linger. Look right beneath the surface, then leave a trail of corpses. Crisis, prices, your life a disposable commodity. Like living in a fantasy, condition to believe that the system even cares whether selling CDs or walking or driving a read. Look, they don't even need a reason. It's just your breathing and being black. When it's such a pretty fall, a pretty fall It don't seem like we falling at all, at all It's just a GMO dream Where things are never really what they seem Please, kill the violins Tell them just to play me something pretty Cause this pretty city got me screaming Bloody murder So they got me screaming This pretty city got me Got me on song, look, get your hand up on my pocket, distraction, so lazy they use the same tactics, like kind them with some trinkets, just don't let them get to thinking, that light bulb gets a blinking, you know niggas and ideas, oh dear, my dear, my dear, you may not know me, but I know you very well, for sight, for sight, they say hindsight is 2020, well tell me something, we gotta see that history is on repeat, and maybe it takes the beat and the melody to speak a little louder than the message in the clouds, or the essence in the air i swear my god is just so clear that a system driven by fear can never give us nothing but more of the same things things oh when it's such a pretty fall a pretty fall it don't seem like we've fallen at all it's just a gmo dream where things are never really what they seem please cue the violins tell them just to play me something pretty because this gritty city got me screaming it's murder Got me screaming, got me. This gritty city got me, got me on song. What's happening? We are live and direct. And I want to say shout out to all the good people out there. I got about seven, eight texts asking me what happened. You know what I mean? They ready to jump somebody. You know what I mean? It's like, yo, what's going on? See, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's all good. It was Please the Please do not jump, Jackie. It was no, my fault. Not, I no, apologize. No, no, no man. Boy, that's, that's fault, Jackie. Don't worry about it. No. Look, <laughs> yeah. we, we have a conversation about sisters, and the ancestors was like, I'm sure E.R. Ferguson was like, oh, no, no, we had to have a sister in here. Wait, that, was not, that was not a mistake yeah. at all. That, that was divine <laughs> okay. decree. You know, all right. Okay. Let's <laughs> go yeah. with that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Seriously. Yes. 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 <laughs> Thank you for that. I'm, no I'm, I'm like, Y'all, y'all, maybe change my water in my cup. I'm like, boy, look at here. It's water. Yeah, okay. change your water, huh? Okay. No water. You know, we call we it water. water then. All right. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Hey, man. <laughs> what, what WWJD? What would Jesus do? Anyway, <laughs> oh, Jesus, what, uh, Jesus would turn to wine. Right? Like, I'm in my verse. Should be wine. Avalam. Avalam. There you go. Hey, get nerve past y'all. Anyway. <laughs> But no, we definitely. Well, well, um, I I do not have to be on here because Dr. Carr should not have. I I don't. Mm -mm. Hey, we flow. Hey, Jack, I'm glad you say that one more time. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's gonna be a misunderstanding. Hey, but anyway, you said, but you said at the end of the, you know, she had, she got work to do any any time. Look, as as much time as you can spend is is. I'm grateful to have you here. Uh, that, that way, I can tell you in front of everybody how much uh how, how grateful I am for your work. 
And Ooh, famous last words. Okay. No, no, absolutely. <laughs> Plus, I mean, you know, we can't trust anything in the white stream media and much of the Negro media when it comes to yeah. international affairs in general. So, you know, the, that time you put in just tonight, walking us through what's going on, this Haiti business, we know that we know they're getting ready to ramp it up. Anytime you see them on the front page of the New York Times or CNN, you know they're getting ready to to start yeah. their thing again. So I'm gr deeply grateful to you, sis, for all the work yeah. you do. They, they got to distract the BS that's going on in Palestine. They like, you know, mm -hmm. let let you Negroes look over here because you know the gangs are running rampant and all this right. type shit. But no question. Really, we know we know the gangs are uh, uh, those who be set tripping with that red, white, and blue. You know what I'm saying? That's the true gangs. Yes, know, sir. So, yes, sir. You know, well, you we don't mean the red, white, and blue riding on a white horse waving an American flag. See, I was. I'm so glad I am not the one who brought her up because people be exactly. like, "Oh my God, Jackie, you I'm, hate Beyonce." I no. do, but See, do you? Do you? I, I really don't, do not like Beyonce. Don't, don't, don't start like that on here, Jackie. Don't have it. Like, you have shit me there. I ain't mad. At, I, ain't, I ain't mad at Beyonce. We can scrap. Come on. <laughs> See, okay. that's what I'm saying. Jackie not afraid of the hive. I mean, what is the hive? It ain't like the African bees. I mean, this is the hive that can't and sting, See, but it ain't gonna hurt you. Not bees, so I ain't scared. No question. Hey, well, well, I, re I represent the Seattle fools, and we ain't, we ain't worried about none of that. So. With, with that in mind, we are here. Welcome to the platform. For those of you who were, who were here already, who's here already, and those of you who came back and joined us, and we had a little glitch, it's okay. It's all good. It's a Friday night, and, and there's nowhere in the world that you'd rather be than on this platform with us tonight. Mm. Tonight. And I mean that. And I'm grateful for uh, our guest, Dr. Carr, and my co-host, Jackie, who I rock with in real life. I just want to say that. I'm saying, yeah, because yeah, you know, sometimes we on the screen and whatnot, you can't tell if it's real or Memorex. You know <laughs> what I mean? So I'm just telling you what the deal is. And Jackie, she she don't know what I'm about to say because I'm I'm Ken the Abdus, Luke Ma. You know what I'm saying? So anything can happen. No, I had to be on my guard every time that man opened his mouth. Like, all right. that's all. Man, why are you telling people that? <laughs> that's right, right. Right. <laughs> listen, listen. I am. I you know I fear nothing but my Creator. You know what no I'm saying? And, I, and some people say that and they just like, oh, man, you got to be scared of something. I'm scared of, 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 of waking up and I'm not fighting hard enough on behalf of our people. I'm scared that um, I would wake up and, uh, and, and, and my comrades would say, man, we getting government jobs. Anyway, How welcome to RSTV. <laughs> How about that? Oh, we're in the words of our sister uh, Lauren Hill in that verse on Rumble in the Jungle. She said, we fear only God, only war when it's jihad. Amen. <laughs> so, it is. Good day for it. I'm good day for it. Of course, no doubt. No yes, doubt. yes. So so today, um, for folks who missed it, you know, I was uh, on the last set and I probably edited in, was giving uh, shout outs to some of the folks who were recent ancestors, Jazz mm -hmm. Hayden, Sequel Odinga, Ealua Ferguson, uh, Lee Berry, Joan Gibbs, who just transitioned. Um, and one of the reasons we're here tonight, Dory Ladner. And if I forgot anyone, you can put in the mm -hmm. chat. We, we rolling off of, uh, off of Black Love right now. And we say salute to all of those uh, recent ancestors who we know that put in work consistently. Consistently. Yes, yes, yes. So anyway, man. Dr. Carr. Brother Greg, man, y'all keep calling me Dr. Carr. You know that that that, that those PhDs ain't got they don't mean nothing. They just like a driver's license. No evidence okay. of whether you can drive or not. Dude. You, know, you know what I'm saying? Woo, just, man. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Carr started something tonight. Look at that. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Call him Greg. Please. Anyway, last last Please. time Greg was in Atlanta, I was up in Richmond, uh, Jackie. She he came through when we was uh doing our thing up that way, but yeah. it's all good. Yeah, yeah so, so you did a reverse. Time. I did see the ear doctor uh, last year when our brother Molly Davis and the crew with Let Us Make Man. Yes, um, Molly's my man. Shout out to Molly Davis. Oh, no yes. question. You know, I know, man. Y'all be y'all be in the streets. Yeah, he he and his uh, crew, women and men of Let Us Make Man and Let Us Make Woman, uh, they had their scholarship uh, yes. uh, affair. And that was back, oh, man, that was almost a year ago. Let me look at it. May the 4th. I'm looking at the thing yeah, they gave yeah. me. So I got a chance. I spoke there. But when I, when I was coming in the venue, the first person I saw was the ear doctor. So we embraced, got a chance to sit and well, chop for a my, minute. He my, was... Yeah, my condolences. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> you don't behave yourself. I ain't going to do it. I ain't, ain't going to do it. It's, it's, Friday. <laughs> it's, it's Friday night. 
anyway, shout out to the chat. We love y'all. Um, I, I want to, you know, today is a, a special, special, special night. It's a special evening. Um, and, and I'm definitely glad that uh, Jackie stopped through. She's putting in overtime, overtime, oh, and more overtime. You know, Ooh. so I'm glad that she was able to come through with me. It was funny. I was going to reach out to her about co-hosting, but I saw she actually had some because it's Friday, and she just answered the call without me even calling. See how that go? <laughs> Three solid oh. hours. Three solid okay. hours of teaching and struggle. No question. All right. I don't, see don't what Abbas no is doing up there. Okay. Hey, right. oh, hey. Abbas is no joke. No question. You understand? <laughs> he fights for us. <laughs> and that's, clearly, that's he's trying to get you to work your nerve. Look, stay as long as you can, sis, but if you decide, hey, I got to go get a nap, or I got five more phone calls to make, you know. <laughs> we with you. <laughs> we with you. We with you. So you I want to I want to get, get, get right to it. Um, okay. Again, you know, um, I would like to start off. I mentioned uh, Mama Dory Latner, yes. who um, I, I reached out to her sister, uh, uh, Mama Joyce, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of days ago as well. Um, mm -hmm. And unfortunately, she couldn't make it. She said she'd be watching. So hopefully she hopped back on now. So we want to make sure we do justice because we don't want no problems. You know what I'm saying? Because we no like way. to make sure that we respect, respect no the family. Yeah. No. So um, for folks who are unfamiliar, Tell us about that beautiful woman that comes up out of Hattiesburg, uh, Mississippi, if you don't mind. Oh, yeah. Well, that's why we're here. And listen, thank you for inviting me to, to be in conversation again. And of course, love to uh, Mama Joyce, uh, to Sister Yodit, uh, Mama Dorian's uh, daughter and her grandbaby, grandson, yes. and the entire family, or other siblings and family there. Because, you know, one of the, among the many things that she is, Dory Latin is a genealogist, so mm -hmm. uh, really has done some remarkable work on her family and then through her family, the history of Africans, not only in Mississippi and North Carolina and other parts of the U.S., but really kind of connected the history of our people. So um, when Joni Eisenberg uh, did a tribute on WPFW on Monday with Frank Smith, uh, of course, the, the founding director of the Civil War Museum here in D.C., and a uh, you know, Georgia born SNCC comrade of Dory Latin, a very close comrade and brother of her, uh, hers and Chuck Hicks, of course, our brother out of Louisiana, whose father was in the Deacons of Defense. And mm -hmm. um, and our sister, Yana, I uh, started to say Yana Van Zan, but no, Yana Gregory, of course, yes, and Yana yes. was on and, and we did a piece <laughs> and uh, Mama Joyce was supposed to come in then, but she, you know, wasn't feeling feeling up to it, and we understand that because in the wake of that relationship, one of the things that she used to say about her sister was that, you know, Dory was my protector. You know, when they was when they were in the schoolyard, elementary school, Dory Dory would fight everybody. <laughs> Joy said, I'm not, I'm not trying to fight all these people, but Dory, uh, if she saw it was going to be some smoke, she wanted to smoke. So, uh, if, if, indeed. So if if, if you're there. Um, any of the family members, of course, uh, we know Joyce Ladner probably best of the family here in D.C. because for many years, of course, she was on the faculty at Howard University. And I often ask the students who was the first woman president of Howard University. And of course, they say very uh, quickly and confidently it's something it's this thing about ignorance and, and arrogance is kind of good. There's never been a president of a woman president of Howard University. OK, don't forget for a year and a half about. Joyce Ladner was the president of Howard University. She was the interim president, but she ran the university. In fact, it was Joyce Ladner who draped Nelson Mandela with the honorary degree when he and uh, Winnie and, and, and the ANC comrades made their first tour of the United States. So, uh, but Dory Ladner, as you say, born um, in Hasburg, Mississippi, uh, June, June 28th, 1942, which was 364 days after her friend and comrade Kwame Ture, who was born June 29th, 1941. Um, and, you know, Mama Dory had all kinds of stories about Kwame Ture, among many others. These, these are the comrades of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Um, she grew up in Hattiesburg, she and her sister, their siblings, uh, their parents, training them and teaching them to be fearless, you know, and also to deeply value education. By the time she was a teenager, and I won't go step by step through her life, I'll just kind of give some highlights and then we can kind of have a conversation about her. Um, she got involved in the freedom struggle. You know, that they, they we narrate it often as the civil rights movement and the black power movement, but the long struggle of Africans for self-determination there in Mississippi. 
and and she she um the, it was the death of Emmett Till, the murder of Emmett Till, that really fired her imagination to really get involved. Of course, she was within a year age wise of Emmett Till when he was killed, and she talks a lot about many of the women and men of Mississippi who brought her into that movement. Vernon Damer, in particular, a fearless brother who who was killed. Uh, Damer's sister was a go went to the church that the Ladners went to and kind of recruited her into the NLACP. And by the time they get to be teenagers, uh, Joyce and Dory end up at Jackson State College. And of course, Jackson State looms large in imagination. Um, I would encourage people perhaps to check out uh, our sister, uh, what's her name? Miriam McGram. Miriam McGram has written a book on Margaret Walker Alexander. With a lot of folks we know Margaret Walker Alexander from her work as a poet, as a novelist, her novel Jubilee, her most famous poem, of course, For My People. But she also founded the Center for the Study of Black Life at Jackson State. And when you read the book that uh, Mariama wrote on Margaret Walker, you get a sense of what Jackson State was at the time that the, and just before and during the time that the Latinists were there, they both got put out of school, however, for mm -hmm. But for a civil rights activity, Mama Dory said, you know, I just led a prayer at a meeting. Next thing you know, they putting us out of school. And they ended up down the road at Tougaloo, Tougaloo College, which had and has the reputation of being a, a place where that nurtured that kind of resistance to state violence and white supremacy in the state of Mississippi and beyond. And Tougaloo looms large in, our, in the imagination of African people. And so that's where they ended up going to school, although she ended up suspending her education three times because of her movement work. Um, she eventually did graduate from Tougaloo in the 70s. And then uh, by then uh, she was getting ready to move to D.C. She came to D.C. in 1974, actually. Um, she and her partner, an Ethiopian brother, uh, they had had their daughter, uh, like I said, Yodit, who still lives here in D.C. And she enrolled at Howard University, where she got a master's in social work and spent over 30 years as a clinical social worker at an old D.C. general. So it's important that for people to kind of know that about her in her D.C. years. But I'll kind of wind up just to talk a, a little bit very broadly and then we can get in more detail. Um, they joined with the NAACP. Um, she joined the Freedom Riders in Mississippi in the fall of 1961. This is at the kind of end of the, the, the initial wave of Freedom Riders in 61. And from there, she got involved in the struggle. Um, she was arrested trying to integrate a Woolworth in 1962. Uh, she joined the Congress of Racial Equality, very good comrades with Bob Moses, became one of the founders of the Council of Federated Organizations, COFO, in Mississippi, and worked very closely with just about everybody who you can think of who ends up in these history books. Uh, in fact, she and her sister and a handful of other young people were, had dinner at the Elks Lodge there in Jackson with their friend uh, who was then the statewide director of MSCP at the time, Mega Evers, and said, we'll see you tomorrow. Mega Evers went home, of course, and was shot in the back by the bastard ba Byron Day the Beckwith. So they actually had the last dinner that Mega Evers had on this side of reality. He was sitting with the Ladners, including Dory Ladner. Um, when the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, which she joined, of course, launched Freedom Summer, this was, you know, Dory was in the middle of that. In fact, she became uh, the director of the Natchez Project, uh, a sister. She was in charge of the Natchez Project, and she was the director from 64, Freedom Summer to 1966. Uh, oh, I should probably, I skipped over something that's very important. Uh, she rode that yellow school bus that people know about when we uh, remember the story of Mrs. Hamer, Fannie Lou Hamer from Sunflower County, Mississippi. Ms. Hamer. Pap Hamer, her husband, they had been evicted from uh, their, the place they lived on the tenant farming that they were doing by the white man that owned the place because they had, you know, she had tried to register to vote. Well, she got on the bus and that yellow bus where, is in, where they ended up getting arrested. Dory Ladner just knew they was going to be brutalized, but she was fearless. And so that's when she first met Fannie Lou Hamer. And she said, I remember, you know, being there with her she was the first one off the bus and up the steps to the courthouse and had packed a little bag because she just knew she figured, well, we're going to be arrested. So let me get my change of clothes and everything together. <laughs> this, of course, would open up the the, 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 the the public struggle of Fannie Lou Hamer that would last for the rest of her life. But what Ms. Dory would always say was 
you know, as young people, we looked at her and said, you know, we didn't have a mortgage. We didn't have rent. We didn't have to worry about food and clothes. We were still, you know, in our late adolescence, early uh, 20 somethings. And to see this sister put her entire existence on the line, however you might characterize that existence, was something that not only inspired us, it instructed us. And so Dory Ladner was just at just about everything you can imagine that's in the history books. The March on Washington in 63, the Poor People's Campaign. As a famous photograph, her friend Danny Lyon took of her. They were standing outside the funeral of the four young girls who, of course, were murdered in Birmingham at 16th Street Baptist Church. And you see Miss Dory holding an American flag. But next to her uh, is a sister who we all know, who's down there where you are, Kalanchi. Uh, our Jegna, our, our dear sister at the time, known as Donna Donna Moses or Donna Richards later. And of course, we know her now as Barima. Absolutely. Yes. With, with the yes. Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. And over the yes. years, you know, that's that's that, that that's my that's my that's my that's my mama. So, you know, I, when we talk about those yes. years, you, it, that's all of our no question. There are stories. There is a narrative that we have to understand because this society has cut all of that off, frozen it in the 60s made it into black and white documentaries and they act like those people did not continue to live. Dory Ladner, Joyce Ladner, Marimba Ani, all those people, Frank Smith, all that yes. SNCC crew that came to D.C., Marion Barry and, and Ivanhoe Donaldson and all, all of those uh, folk, Karen Spellman and her husband, A.B. Spellman, who are still here in the area. I, I joke with them all the time. I said, it seemed like all the SNCC moved to D.C. <laughs> and so Tim Jenkins and all them, and many of them are still here. And so, you know, Mama Dory, there's so many things we could say about her, uh, but up until the time she made physical transition, and of course now her journey begins into a powerful ancestorhood where she joins all of our warriors who now fight for us on the other side, whose names we keep alive, whose spirits we keep alive. Um, of course, like, like Abdus Lukman, no question, like my mother, uh, Catherine Carr, and all of the ancestors that we have. Um, Mashariki Jawanza, who just made transition, uh, another one of our mothers out of Indianapolis, who was long distance runner in the Council of Independent Black Institutions, um, and so many others we can name. But I know we're talking about sisters tonight, but emphasizing sisters. So, you know, I'll stop there and then we can talk more about we take whatever. I, I want to, first of all, I mean, you know, that's why you are important. Because the thing is, we, we have to be able to tell the story. This is the effort that many of us are making here at Black Power Media. We wanna bring the folks on and give them their flowers and let the folks know who's real and what's what. Because, I mean, it is so much just on, on, on Mami Dory, you just, as you just talked about, you mentioned Fannie Lou Hamer and you know, folks don't know, she was the one, if I'm not mistaken, who walked Fanny to register to vote. You That's understand true. what I'm saying? So so if you're gonna talk about certain things or whatever, this is the person who who helped the history makers make history. And, and the beautiful thing about, one of the things I learned about organizing, oftentimes we, we go with the popular names and we go with, the, with, with, with those who many times are state sponsored or state approved. Yes, sir. You understand? But, you know, you mentioned Marimba Ani, for example, our organization, FTP Movement, we gave out three Lifetime Achievement Awards. The first one mm -hmm. was to Amiri Waraka, and the second and third was to Mama Marimba and Daruba Ben Wahad. We, we uh, awarded Marimba and Daruba together. <laughs> and, you know, they were friends going back to Ghana. No question. We talked about how she used to stay in Ghana with with him when she when he when he when she would go to uh Ghana and she's one of you know one of my OGs one of the elders that we've had uh plenty of work here in Atlanta and many folks don't even know she was a part of SNCC no. real quick funny thing about all that I just had um we was talking about Imam Jamil the other day on the platform and we had a fear Wanganza on mm. and I I posed the question I said man you know when folks think about H. Rap Brown, the average person is thinking about Black Panther Party. When folks think about Stokely Carmichael, you think about the Black Panther Party. When folks think about uh, Kathleen Cleaver, you think about the Black Panther Party. But these are folks who held serious positions in SNCC. And for all practical purposes, 
H. Rap Brown or Imam Jamil Alameen was the chairman of SNCC, but he was the uh, honorary minister of justice for the Black Panther Party. That's right. Stokely Carmichael was honorary. You know, so when you talk about, you know, I mean, his work in SNCC was uh, more important for lack of better, better words. And I asked, I said, man, why, you know, why aren't many people, you know, talking about SNCC and so on and so forth? And she said, basically, that folks are in love with the uh, the imagery, not to, to mess up her quote, but, you know, they love the, the nostalgia around the Black Panther Party. But with SNCC, a lot of folks don't want to stand with a lot of these folks because of the fact that, you know, everybody didn't go choose a different career. You know, they didn't put their soft shoes on and say, look, I'm no longer down these these rebel Negroes. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm going to go over here and get this check. Um, my, my question, and, and of course, uh, Jackie, you could jump in as well. But my question to you, uh, Greg, would be. With, with all you just mentioned about Dory Ladner, her mm -hmm. name should be on every page of damn every African history book. Of course in this country and abroad. Why is it that you think that folks like Dory Latner are only mentioned amongst a certain crowd or certain individuals, should I say? Mm -hmm. Well, brother, I think we all three of us, all of us here know the, know the answer to that. Uh, the state has to narrate our existence in a way that keeps itself in power. We know that. When we start to see our people appear in state or state sanctioned narratives, it's because they had no choice. So you catch glimpses of Dory Latin. For example, the uh, Obama verse project that came out a few months ago. I'm sorry, uh, I shouldn't call it Obama verse, the Netflix. Um, project that came out a few months ago on Bayard Russell. Correct. I mean, you know, I, I, I watch this stuff like now, how many more? I mean, y'all got these Obama beards down, man, between Michelle and Barack, boy. Right. That's a power right. couple injecting all kind of foolishness into the narrative stream of, of African. The new Will and Jada. Brother. Yeah, go ahead. I guess, I guess I guess we needed a new one. I mean, it's funny how these things work, right? Collectives can be can work for all kind of purposes, but in the yeah. um in the Bayard Rustin vehicle, you see the Ladners, the Ladner sisters, because they both moved to New York to work hmm. on organizing with Bayard Rustin on the March on Washington. But they don't, you wouldn't know it was them if you didn't know. You know, Mama Dory had that fire to her as kind of a kind of a never say die approach. And, and you see a character there um, evoke that energy and that character, according to her and, and to the people who worked on the film, that's Dory Ladner. So you see, I mean, so she's there, but but why does she appear? She appears because he can't exclude her. And we right. know that, you know, who we are to each other is really the, the thing that allows us to, to, if not ignore those things, ignore those narratives, which Clyde Taylor, another brother who recently made Transition, the, the great film critic and scholar and filmmaker, uh, his book, The Mask of Art, he calls it the art culture complex and the master narrative. He says the master narrative is what keeps our uh, relationships the way in the way that they are, the hierarchies, the way that they are. And so, you know, when we think of the reason we're here on a Friday night, at least in, in, in the eastern in the, on the East Coast, we're here and not, say, on MSNBC, where Joy Reid has just released a book on uh, Merle Evers and Mega Evers or CNN with its dying ratings or with everybody else watching basketball or whatever on ESPN or other these platforms. Well, the reason we're not there is because those things were set up to push a certain narrative. Now, of course, with the explosion in access that, or at least the, uh, the appearance of access, Tim Wu's book, The Master Switch, always reminds us, however, that with a flick of a switch, all this electronic stuff can go dead. So we should always be, be cognizant of that. But with the explosion in technology, it renders those platforms less effective, uh, even when some of them, like Elon Musk's platform, uh, is 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 taken offline in terms of the way it was configured. 
And so as a result, the stories we tell each other and the narratives we tell each other, the ones that have always been there, spaces like Black Power Media, spaces here in this particular vehicle, in this, in this, in this space, you know, Rise Started TV, information like we've been listening to for several hours as, as you, Jackie, have led us to begin to understand and continue to understand how to build on our awareness of each other and our connectivity as a, as a global force. If we can just become aware of each other and, and organize in the wake of that awareness, you know, those things, we've reached a moment where it's less important that those narrative vehicles include a Dory Ladner, include a Marimba Ani. And the way, the, finally, the way we know that we are being effective in all of this work we're doing in all of these places, the way we know we're being effective is that they are beginning to sprinkle some of these narratives into those vehicles that are usually a lot more kind of cut and dry, black and white, for lack of a better term. And that's because you got to you got to you got to open up a little bit to incorporate some of that resistance. I borrowed that from the Gramsci I read when I was in graduate school, which is so long ago. I want to come for me and say that's not what Gramsci. No, that's what Gramsci said. The resistance right. and incorporation. <laughs> when 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 hegemony is threatened, it opens up just a little bit to absorb some some of the resistance. So we're seeing that kind of stuff now in those narratives because stuff like what's going on right now, what we're doing, it's more and more is is being more and more effective. Right on, right on. Jackie, would you like to jump in? I know you you're over there looking look like you're ready, like double dutch. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm 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 glad you you kind of went into the the generational um difference in the way we organize and how technology has has changed the way we organize, right? Because I'm I'm from the um, you know, this person is at Howard University, the auditorium. Somebody's in there with a with a uh, an audio tape, right. or an audio tape, and the next yeah. thing you know, you know, you can you can buy the audio tape <laughs> at the end because you know they feverishly over there copying the tapes and whatnot, and then you get those tapes uh, on the on the street, you know, from the vendors and and whatnot. If you got lucky, you got a video, <laughs> but it it was. Long, you know, long before cell phones, and and that's how you heard people speak, like, uh, you know, Kwame Ture. That's that's how you, you know, if you weren't a student at at Howard University, that's how you heard. Uh, um, um, oh, what's her name? I don't know why her name escaped me right now. Mm. Francis, mm -hmm. not Francis, Francis Wilson. Yes, goodness gracious. No, the only reason we know is because she was. Uh, you got to be there with her regular monthly. <laughs> marathon sessions those are legendary that's exactly yeah, right. and, yeah. I, and i i i'm always sneaking into places i do that a lot actually. <laughs> i just because i'm cheap and i want to see somebody and i'm like mm. <laughs> no, that's right at least you honest <laughs> no question uh, I, no i said at least you honest I, i'm on the same I, thing certain things i feel like i ain't supposed to pay for you know I'm what i'm saying, saying if it's a benefit I, it's all good fact, if, you know? if the door if if the door it goes to the speaker, cool. I'm I'm fine. That's right, yeah. Right, right, but right. if I know that door is not going to the speaker, yes, like, right. yeah, Listen. I'm not. Uh, can you spot me? You think maybe? That's Please. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. nah, we we need gotta do all that. It, it's like you walk on in like you belong there, sir. Yeah, I door? mean, keep it moving. <laughs> well, I can't really do that because I'm I'm so short that people notice. But you can slide by. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> around the back, right? <laughs> yeah, <you're> right. <laughs> no question. It's 12 gates to the city as the old folks church. Folks. Without a doubt. Without a no, doubt. But, you know, people, we, we, we folks who grew up in Southeast who didn't go to Howard University, we, we wouldn't, we didn't have another way to hear these intellectuals. You know, everybody was not like mm -hmm. me watching CNN and, and C-SPAN um and uh, uh uh the mclaughlin group and 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 and, and uh, you know all the the news shows you know a lot of black kids didn't grow up like like me being a weirdo political junkie you know who my mom was like now this the comic books were bad the metal music was worse this now um jackie I don't i'm know glad who you I'm glad you're on the right side of the fence because <laughs> she she went from comic books to metal 
to black power. Now I can rock yeah. with you because you know what I'm saying. Because however you get there, you know what look, I'm saying. Jackie, you know? I didn't realize you was a comic book head, Jack. Because we can have that oh. conversation. And look, I, the metal too. Because between Robert Plant, Queen, all ACDs, okay. all them. Come on, we can talk about them too. That's what I'm saying. But you know, I I'm think Jackie Jack, go a little bit harder. Got all that right there, all of it. Don't I think Jackie play. Jackie talking mega death for somebody? I'm not sure. She, I mean, those are she, nice. She, she they're, 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 they're the classics are always good, but, it's, but it's you got to throw some Slipknot in there. You got to throw some Seven yeah. Dust in. There. You got to throw some Fishbone if you don't have Fishbone. fishbone. I'm gonna come gonna beat here, Doctor hey, Up, hey, for hey, messing hey, with hey. me on the Fishbone. Really, shout, shout out to a band called Death. Just look, <laughs> man, man if you Wait call minute, yourself a metalhead and you don't know about death from Detroit, we ain't friends. You, we are not friends. You are George not friends. And and we are not friends. <laughs> I, 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 I had to take it back because, you know, y'all y'all too scholarly for me. I had to come back. I'm like, how, how I'm going to top this. You know, no, no, no. It's, no, no. This, this, is, this isn't even a scholarly conversation. It don't no, no, I'm, I'm, no, no, I'm talking about, I'm talking about scholarly be... metal. I'm talking about metal, metal scholar. I ain't talking Let, about metal. Yeah, that's about, this doesn't yeah. have to be no an intellectual style. conversation. Oh, <laughs> we just go. I'm just gonna lay down some rules about you the kind of metal you gonna play in my presence. I know that's <laughs> right. I know that's right. <laughs> well, listen, y'all, y'all about to go all the way to Southeast DC. We gonna take this back to Dory Ladner, Fannie yes, Mae, and yes, the women of the, the rights movement because they they gonna they gonna chump me tomorrow. They gonna be like, man, you supposed to be talking about such and such. Man, I'm sorry, it was Jack. <laughs> but we but go ahead. Are, <laughs> We're talking about it. We're talking but, about it. I mean, okay, so, like I said, yeah. Yes. Okay. So getting getting back to Dory Ladner because let me get back to my water. Go ahead. She yeah she she, <laughs> she fascinates me. She is. I, I got to meet her because uh, I love WPFW and I go to a lot of their events and, mm, and yes. you know me and Sean just started our show on WPFW and we're just like, yes. Oh, it's Dory and and yes. she's just she has always fascinated me and people like her. And, and I wonder if you, knowing that the history, her history that we don't know so well, do you think that the, um, the, the pushing aside of black women freedom fighters mm-hmm. is both an external and an internal contradiction? Because of course, you know the, the the system does not the system doesn't care about what black women do. They're they're not concerned about you know black girl magic or that. They're just looking for something they can use black people to continue to uh, uh, pull wool over other black people's eyes. So so that so let's make that clear at the beginning. The system, marketing, the, the government, the military. They don't care about black people. They're not concerned about relationships between black men and black women. So. Their only purpose for ever platforming or bringing attention to a a black woman is for their own cynical purposes to advance imperialism. I I really need people to understand that clearly. All this stuff where the 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 corporate media and and entities and institutions are are uh, hopping on the bandwagon of black girl magic. You know, all their spokespersons are young black women now young Hispanic women, young indigenous women, right? They're, they're not concerned about the plight of black women, black mothers. They're, they just want to know that they can grab some some mouthpieces that That's they right. can mm-hmm. put in front of us to tell us, oh, the system's not that bad. That's not how it works. You got it wrong. You start what trouble on here tonight, wanna... Jackie. Huh? Hold it now. No. You, you start trouble on here tonight talking about black girl magic. See, that's why I love Jackie. Because Jackie go, Jackie going straight to it. No discrimination. No I change. say certain things. I'm, I'm hating. Yeah. No. Nah. No. Keep on. No. Keep you, on going, Jackie. But I heard my people. fan. External no, people, and internal contradictions. Yes. She's, she's, and and, she, and listen, she didn't get to the you, internal ones yet. That, but that's what yes. I haven't gotten. I don't need to explain the external anymore. You know how that works. Exactly. She's cooking, Greg. Internal. And I, I want to be clear about this. I don't want anybody to get this misconstrued because I'm tired of explaining that I don't hate black men. I just don't. I'm not going to participate in the wholesale Why hatred of black men. I'm not going to give brothers that narrative that black men hate black women because they threatened by us. No, Dude, ain't nobody threatened by my little five foot one, five foot one self. That just <laughs> wasn't threatened by me until oh, I God. opened my mouth. And then he was like, shit, I can't run no game on that one. Damn it. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, so, and like a real man, he said, that's who I want to be my partner. 
So I'm I'm not at all saying that the internal contradiction is is the gender wars between between black men and black women Absolutely. because that's manufactured mm -hmm. too. That's not something that is internal to us. That's a, a a result of indoctrination too. This same indoctrination that cynically uses talented black people Absolutely. to mislead other black people. Right? This is the same system. So they don't care about brothers either. No, they're, they're no. not interested in in stepping into this gender issue with black men and black women. I, tw I swear, if we stop watching romance movies and reading romance novels, we would stop thinking that relationships are supposed to go a certain way. Grow the hell up. But absolutely. Absolutely. But, absolutely. but do you think this this struggle with female leadership? That's what I'm going to call it. This this uncomfortability with with female leadership because of the way black men have, of course, they've been indoctrinated by this patriarchal system. And if right. black people want to be capitalists, like you know, the 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 grown-up, the big capitalist, mm -hmm. then of course they want to emulate anything else in this system that looks like success, right? So it's not right. just being a capitalist and, and chasing the bag, it's also not really having a whole heck of a lot of respect for women because, you know, outside of the, uh, you know, keeping women in the kitchen and pregnant and barefoot, that, that those are economic situations, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not because black men hate black women. Mm -hmm. Black men are not intimidated by black women. Black men are infected with the same paternalistic or, or patriarchal uh, uh, ideology and indoctrination about mm -hmm. women's role in society that that they are in, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. they interact with us with a lot of the same kind of dysfunction mm -hmm. that we get from the larger white male society, right? So it's not it's not that black men have a hatred for us. They're not crazy. They know mm -hmm. who's going to take care of them. Mm -hmm. Brothers are not nuts. <laughs> Interesting. They're not trying to run off everybody who we, the only people who give a damn about them, right? We, so, we, so we got the right one on tonight, don't we? Uh, Greg, it ain't, it ain't yeah. uh, we, no, this is I've been holding this for a long time. Can you tell? This, this is important. You can let loose here. <laughs> this church right here. No, question. amen. Well, I, I don't know. You've been holding it, Jerry. Every time that I've heard you in conversation and I'm always going to cuss somebody out all the time. I, I yeah, this is this is. This is <laughs> It has to be continue. You have to continue to yeah. to put the put that at the center as an internal conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So so that part that part that part the internal part which is yeah. which is I think the internal part I think is our biggest struggle. I think I I I don't think the struggle against imperialism is like and white supremacy is like so so dangerous that people are afraid that they're going to lose their lives not that that's not true right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is true mm -hmm. that absolutely anybody who opposes this system is going to get it <laughs> and 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 anybody who looks at the history of black struggle they know the history of ind indigenous struggle they understand but I, I still don't think that is the thing that that drives brothers to convey this this kind of whitewashed or not whitewashed uh, watered down patriarchy, mm, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. It's 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 not full patriarchy because they don't have power to what. What you gonna do if I don't cook your? What you gonna do if I don't cook your uh, your your breakfast? What you gonna do? Starve. I mean, <laughs> I mean, so, so many. Do black <laughs> men, yeah, y'all are. So do black men <laughs> as a as a whole as a group have right. the power to take anything from me or deny me anything? Hmm. That I need for my life because I disagree with them. D do do what? What power do black men have to take anything from me or to keep anything from me because hmm. they they don't like what I said or hmm. I so, I don't see brothers having that kind of power. Not not so, to come interfere in my life and be like, oh, hmm. you don't like the way I think about women sometimes, Jackie. Well, here I'm gonna come take your car. Nah, baby, that's theft. I'm chasing you <laughs> and you might get shot. So yeah, yeah. Right. And you know, there's, there's, there's a response to that. That's right. But I'm so, just like, so, what, what, what do so brothers control that they can this hold back. it over our head and force us to do their will? So bringing this back historically, because what you're saying is it, it's, it's like 
is 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 gospel. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it's just like you know when we talk about racism, not having the power to be racist, right? You know, I, I'm glad that you're saying what you're saying because of the fact that uh, Greg and I we can get 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 shot talking yeah, something no, like this no, in, in the wrong places. We, no, we will be no. thought of in so many different ways oh, in, 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 the, in the wrong places. But um, right. tying it back about? historically, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Let, let's let's you know because we're talking during like we're, we're talking. Yeah. We no, we have yeah, enough. absolutely. So I mean, understanding that that's the dynamic that we're living in, yeah. we don't even understand. We yeah. don't. We do not understand. That's what our the landscape of our mind and our social interactions with each other. We don't even understand that's what it is. It's all manufactured. These are not our original thoughts. We didn't come up with this ridiculous shit. We're doing what we've been conditioned to do, right? right. So understanding that, and that right. that's always been the case. I don't think that's new. No. When we don't hear about black women like Dory Ladner, when we when we don't hear, because I I like I learned about um uh, uh W. E. B. Du Bois's wife from Dr. Sharice Burton Stelly. Shirley Graham. I, I didn't. I didn't know anything about this woman, and I didn't know she was as Shirley influential was and important and badass as he. Shirley Graham. Was so amazing. when these kinds of things happen, Doctor Carr, when the women don't get shouted out in the movement in the freedom struggle, what do you think that is attributable more to the external patriarchy that doesn't ever want to give, you know, credit to the people that they don't approve, any of the people that they don't approve? Um, or is that more of an internal contradiction where that's a situation where the brothers at this point, I get that it might not have been a, you know, a big concern back in the forties and the fifties. Okay. I get it, but this is a different time now. And we all have supposed, supposed to have matured in some way. So now do, right. don't you think that the, there should be more brothers saying, let's make sure we don't leave out these sisters in this struggle like was done in the past yeah. let's make sure if we're going to talk about this event that i was involved in let me make sure you know about these other people who was involved in this who did you know outreach and these people who did that and the women who did x y and z how, how do you feel about that because i i i think that's kind of more internal but you know right. it's before, it's not before a, you, I don't want people to be that pissed at me. So <laughs> before you answer, Dr. Carr, I want to shout out to, to Jackie's point. My strongest general, Fulani Sunni Ali. Okay. That is that is that that was my general. Now, I've had, you know, shout out to our ancestor, OG Shaka, mm -hmm. um, Kamasi, OG Kamasi, and of course the Ruba. But I still stand by Fulani Sunni Ali was my greatest general. Okay, I'm gonna say that. And I also say, as far as our organization, the FTP movement, the majority of our serious fighters, and I wanna shout out the African Martial Arts Institute as well, the majority are women. Mm. And they train like we train. It's not a situation, ain't no girl push ups. There's no excuses saying we don't have to train. Right. They will whoop your ass bad. And you many of them outrank me in yes, the sir. African martial arts system. A few of them I brought into it. So I just want to say that because of the fact that it's not like that all across the board, but it's mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Baba. I'm sorry. I, I just mm -hmm. I just wanted to oh, point yeah. that out. No, please don't apologize. This this first of all, I'm grateful for this conversation because it gives us an opportunity to to go right at the heart of this. And I would say also that I don't have an answer that is satisfactory because I don't know that there is a satisfactory answer. And I'll say that I say it for this reason. Um, and just before before I say anything else, let me just say that we are aware, those of us in, in this formation tonight, that the reality for many of our formations, our liberation formations, reflects what you just said, Kalanji. Uh, when I listen to Paul Coates and his comrades in the Panthers, um, Eddie Conway and um, another ancestor, of course, and whether it be the Panthers on the West Coast or the East Coast, whether it be in the South or the Midwest, the organization was majority female. And every time 
there's a conversation about the academic assessment of the Black Panther Party and questions of intersectionality or feminism. Every time I've been around living Panthers, and that's quite a number of times. In fact, uh, I saw some of them, Lane Brown among others, out on the West Coast, the 10th anniversary of Black Lives Matter out there, Melina Abdullah and, and her comrades were out there this summer. And, you know, sitting there listening, having conversations, you know, she's quick to remind that much of the leadership was women. But anyway, we'll come back to that. But what I really wanted to to to, to kind of start with in, in, in dialogue around this, and thank you, Jackie, for raising it the way you did in terms of an external and an internal factor. I would say this. I'm not sure as a species we have presented yet an ideal way of being in relationship with each other. Mm, yeah. Mm. I don't I, as a species, period. Mm. Before mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. as a race or cl even class and stratification. I don't think that we've come up with one now. I think we have been blinded because of the contemporary moment. And by that I mean the last several centuries, maybe the last half millennium, last 500 years or so, because of the invasive species called Western civilization. Invasive species. You know, it, it is kind of invasive, right? Because I mean, everybody okay. on the planet ultimately is an African immigrant. We all came out of Africa, but some of us got caught between those two in the interglacial period between the Verm two and the Worm two, and we adapted to Western Eurasia and the mm. cultures that emerged from cultures of scarcity. I mean, this is everybody from Braudel to Foucault. Everybody agrees these cultures of scarcity created a severe way of moving through the world that has now infected all of us. You know, so I mean, you know, what what is romance except looking for protection in a hostile world? And you've diminished the role of the woman. So you start with Snow White and Cinderella and you carry it all the way through to the rom-coms. But the whole idea is that I need to be protected. Well, that, of course, is absurd, depending on the, 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 the geography, just depending on where you are. There, there's a materialist dimension to this. But I don't get too far off into that. I don't know that as a species we've come up with ideal ways of relating to each other. I think that there are, I don't think it's a secret, I think we all would agree that there are better ways than others that come from all the cultures, which is why when W.E.B. Du Bois says that what I've been fighting for my whole life, he and Shirley Graham near the end of their time in the U.S. before they went to Ghana in the spring of 1960, about a month or two after SNCC was founded down the street at Raleigh, they were in Charlotte, North Carolina at Johnson C. Smith speaking to uh, i think shirley graham did the dinner speech and her husband wb did the the luncheon speech mm. uh, with the um uh, i'm looking at the it was reprinted in a in a journal i'm looking at over there but i'm not gonna get up and get it. i'm trying to remember the name association mm. the association uh let me see so now what not association of colleges and secondary schools association of social scientists i think was the name of it. black school teachers black anyway um and I should put the footnote there on Shirley Graham. You know, Gerald Horn's book, Race Woman, on Shirley Graham is very good mm -hmm. on that. And, of course, she wrote her own. She wrote children's books. Yeah. Benjamin Banneker, mm -hmm. George Washington Carver. And you're right, Sharice Burton Stelly, uh, Dr. Stelly has done some done excellent work on her. I love her memoir, which she co-mingles with his life, called His Day is Marching On. It's kind of oh, difficult mm -hmm. to, 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 to find these days, which is it's ostensibly about W.E.B., but it's about their life together. And I, one of the reasons I love it is because she talks about the fact she was a little girl when she mm -hmm. first met W.E.B. Du Bois. He was a grown ass man. He came to stay with them. I think it was they were in Kansas City. And he, he she said, I, only thing I remember it was I was mad at him because as a little girl, I had my own bedroom and my father, who was a minister, made me give up my bedroom so that he could sleep in there because he was our guest. <laughs> and then decades later, they end up being partners and married. And there's a story there. You know, David Levin Lewis is well known of their relationship that. Well, anyway, I'm going to get too deep into that. It's just fascinating that relationship between Shirley Graham and W.B. Du Bois, because they were indeed like Paul and Essie Robeson, like uh um, William Thompson, uh, William Patterson, and mm -hmm. uh, the lawyer Louise Thompson Patterson, mm -hmm. um, uh, James and Esther Cooper Jackson. Esther Cooper Jackson again recently just had it made transition, uh, well over a century old there in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. these partnerships, these 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 women and men together in forms of relationships give the lie to the narrative that somehow 
there were there was only these quote unquote great men, but that only speaks to the external. The internal, I think, is, 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 is as you say, is very important. Since we as a species really haven't, I don't think, grappled well with with completely healthy ways of interacting. And I'm hoping that that's not biological or genetic, because I don't necessarily think of women and men or male and female. I want to talk about the gender dimension, leaving the biological mm -hmm. function. I don't think necessarily that male and female and equality need to be paired conceptually because, you know, males come out of females. And I think that the cultures that recognize that are the ones that have come closest to some form of interaction that would be ideal. And, I, and so many of the non-Western cultures center women. Now, they don't do it well all the time. And right. adult, none of them do it perfectly. But when I think, for example, of the ancient Egyptian, when you see the emergence in all of their creation narratives, all of their ways of knowing, the idea is that that which created that which created us as humans didn't have a gender. So none of their creative st creation stories have gender. But when gender emerges, it always emerges paired. It always emerges female and male. A lot of people don't know that. So when you see what who the Greeks would call Osiris or Isis or Set and Asar in in um, or Sar and Set in 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 Kemetic, to the degree that we can voice these things because we don't know how the, how they would sound, but we do know we can translate the hieroglyphs to see the concept. You see, you see her sister, uh, Nebet. Greeks call him mm -hmm. ne call her Neptis, or and her brother, uh, Setek, who the Greeks would call Set are also well seer or her husband's brother and sister they're all brothers and sisters and husbands and wives there's no in-laws involved what oh, they're wow. trying to represent is this range of possible relationships between female and male and at the core of it however the foundation the conceptual universe for all that exists the whole concept of reciprocity and balance the whole process of equal um everything has an equal and opposite reaction whatever you do is going to ultimately come back to you all of that is encompassed in a concept they call ma'at. And when you see ma'at, the T on the end in Medu Nature, when you're doing hieroglyphs, the T is, it's a difference when you're talking about language and feminine and masculine, and we're talking about social relations, but linguistically, the T is female. And when you see the representation of her in the glyphs, ma'at is female. Ma'at doesn't have a, par a straight paired partner. Sometimes you see her with Jehudi, the Greeks call him Toth, Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, but but my I is it is literally the foundation for everything. And I'm saying all that to say that that's that's one of the reasons we study Egypt, not because we were all kings and queens. We know that if I, if, if, the, if the three of us have been if we go to Egypt every uh, August. And so we'll go again. We had 200 and some people in Egypt last August, first two weeks of August. When we go, we stand at the pyramids like this is greatness. And everybody knows, right, that if we had been here, we'd have been working on them pyramids. We would not have been in the palace. There's a class. I, I need you to say that. Yes, yes. It's very please, important. please. You know, because yes. we because wouldn't have been kings or queens. Not, we not us. Kings or queens. We wouldn't have been kings or queens. And, and it's important to understand that because at the same time, we also understand that while Ramses was probably an asshole, Jehudimo <laughs> was probably a little crazy. At the same time, Pharaoh, Peruwa, which literally means the great house, does not translate into king. Or mm. queen. There were mm -hmm. women who had, it's called the great house. There were women who managed the affairs of the entire Egyptian nation, the state system. Hatshepsut probably being the most famous of them in the so-called New Kingdom. But the idea of, when, when you see the Egyptian child, oh, there's a female Pharaoh. No, see, this is the Western thing. There's a Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. they, they, they don't make a distinction. Mm -hmm. When you get to that level, the gender is not important. Now, I said I'd like to say this. When we got stuffed on those boats, we picked up a lot of bad habits. And, I, I, and I'm not sure that patriarchy didn't impact us all. Now, I won't say all the same because that's absurd in terms of how we think about ourselves in relations to each other. I will say, however, that it did impact us all so that ideas about what it means to be a girl, a boy, a woman, a man, the things that we brought with us have continued to echo because we've figured out ways to pass them on from generation to generation to generation. But as we know, cultures bleed, cultures change, cultures are violently disrupted. And, and the debates that have gone on for, for 
for for decades now, but really, um, really centuries, but decades as far as the last maybe hundred years or so, about what did we retain from Africa that we have used to resist and survive? What have we absorbed and adapted either voluntarily or involuntarily from the places we ended up that have reinforced either our will to resist or reinforced some terrible things that we never had resolved anyway, like patriarchy? What is that? led to and this is where I'll, I'll, I'll end for now in terms of that as it relates to these internal and external factors there's very little that i can see and maybe you know we should you know continue really think think through this there's very little from the west that looks useful in terms of relationships that's right it is so deeply flawed we know that relationships is a relationship is at the center of human identity the smallest unit of human social organization is two a male and a female. And then it remains two after those two may procreate because the two that are essential is the female and the child because the male may or may not be there. That's why I say to say equality might be difficult because biologically, I don't know that that necessarily gets us where we're trying to go in terms of trying to build better human relationships because two is the smallest social unit. Once you go past two to three or four or five or six, you're talking about blood relationships. And then the next level, dozens of people, it still may be blood relationships. But then when you get past that, now you're looking for common markers, totems, shrines, icons, rituals, things that bond you to each other with identity. But ultimately, relationships are the only way we know we're human. Nobody is a human by themselves. The West has had spent so much time trying to control relationships in terms of number, in terms of scarcity and resources, that the culture that emerges is one of suspicion, one of fear, one of attempts to dominate, and it just soaks through everything, class, uh, what we call gender. So what we see, I think, is a tension. And this is where I'll kind of end for now. We see this tension with everybody who has encountered the West attempting to hold on to the things that made them human before this violent encounter, either as an act of resistance, really, and trying to live in the world as they have inherited it and trying to struggle against it. So how does that speak in concrete terms about what we, what we, you know, we're we're talking about tonight in terms of Mama Dory Ladner and some, I think about, for example, Mississippi Freedom Summer 64. And I think about Joyce and Dory Ladner, and people can find this if you go online and go to the Library of Congress or even on YouTube and you can look up, they did a long interview, the sisters, Joyce and Dory Ladner, and they were talking about what everybody always wants all the snake people to talk about, which is the 1960s, as if they all passed away in the 1960s. They all disappeared. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, 1961, I mean, they were all gone. You know, it's like, right. I was forgetting right. about the freedom, right? Well, damn, this is 2000. And, anyway. Right. <laughs> they start talking about this very famous moment that we've all heard about, read about, probably talk to people about the controversy over the idea that Kwame Ture or Stortley Carmichael in a snake meeting said the role of the woman in the revolution is prone on your back. Do this thing. Right, right. And once again, for the billionth time, I'm sure we've all heard this one time. We've heard it infinite number of times. They say, y'all taking that out of context. These are a bunch of young people who were joking with each other, arguing with each other, and it's SNCC. So if you're talking about the Freedom Houses in Jackson, they would rent out two or three houses, and everybody stayed in the Freedom House, which means right. not only did they organize together, eat together, struggle together, face down, deaf together, register people to vote together, inspire, they also getting down together in other ways, many of them. Because again, these are people in their 20s. <laughs> you right. understand? Right. Some right. of them people paired up, and it wasn't always just Black people and Black people. In other right. words, it becomes very interesting, this SNCC, energy that emerges. And you talk about lifelong friends and comrades to this day, those of them who still walk the earth. But I'll never forget in many times in conversation with Mama Dory or Mama Joyce or many of the state people, they would say when they opened up and brought these white students to Mississippi, they, and this was of course Freedom Summer, and they're on the front line. Of course, the famous deaths of James Cheney, uh, Mickey uh, Schwerner and, 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 and Goodman uh, Andrew Goodman become the kind of marquee signature deaths that open up the fact that this racial terror is going on in Mississippi. 
And of course, it leads uh, the jo Matthew Jones to write in the Mississippi River, River, the brother who wrote the Battle of the Mega Evers. All this thing. While y'all looking for these white boys who got killed, who gave their lives, you find that all these other black bodies, and we've been telling y'all what they've been doing. So it opened it up. Right. But yeah. as a result of the of the violence, you know, Dory, Dory Lanham would say, you know, we told the white girls, our comrades down here struggling with us, facing death together, y'all stay in the office. Because the, the cultural logic of Mississippi, if you want to piss a redneck off, you get some interracial people riding around in Mississippi. And worse still, you put the white girl in the car with these black dudes and this it's black right. girl, they go, they they lose their mind. This is the patriarch. This is the external factor you're talking about. This is the thing. What the mm -hmm. hell? It's one thing these niggas run around. You got a white girl? Oh, no. Now we're going to run all y'all down. And maybe why Schwerner and Goodman lost their lives. They're out there with Absolutely. James. James but a white girl, loser, loser. In, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. in the patriarchy, women aren't humans. <laughs> we yeah. know that. So you're my possession, white girl. Why are right. you riding down the street with Charlie Cobb and Clinton Cox? No, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. Yeah. you cross the line now. F voting, you you got the white white girls belong to me. This is the thing. It is the cultural logic that feeds everything from the romance stories to the pornography. The idea of pornographia, literally the writing of harlots. You are a thing. You don't, you're don't. you not a human. So at any rate, they told them, stay in the offices. Right. That turned into you are oppressing women. Right. Hmm. They were very quick to say, no, no, no. Don't bring that feminist. In fact, I remember one interview. Um, Joyce was like, this is that feminist stuff. Don't bring this is a trained sociologist, by the way, who when she came to Howard, edited a book called The Death of White Sociology. She said, What you're not gonna do is import these gendered logics from the West into these internal conversations and stir up chaos. At which point Mama Dory would say things like, Look, we were in SNCC. We were a community, we were what they call a circle of trust. Did we have issues? Yes. And that's what I'm coming to in a second, the internal, which is the most important thing. Right but okay. please do not confuse that with the external forces that had a cultural logic that was very different than what we did. Now, internally. Internally, this is the sensitive conversation. I just finished reading um, uh, Deborah Jones's book that she did with Sister Tandiwe Chimarenga. Um, so what yes. we stood for, no question. Yes. Sitting over there now. And of course, our, our dear brother, um, the 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 edit the publisher of Diasporic Africa Press, Kwasi Kanadu, who made that possible. And I encourage everybody to read that book. We are we all know, including a lot of people on this platform, we say, you know, I don't celebrate Kwanzaa because my my lot of Karinga, Tiamoyo Karinga, they brutalized Deborah Jones and, and her comrade. They was in us, they took them in, and she goes through all that in this book. It's a very valuable grappling with and read. And then you ask yourself, how do we grapple with the internal, the patriarchy? How do we grapple with the stratification? How do we grapple with the class question? I think what we have to do is reset. And that reset requires us coming from getting to some fundamental understandings. What is our objective? What are our, our objectives? If our objectives are to create a different kind of community, and they would ask my majority this all the time, what do you want to see? She said, I want a society where people can eat, people have shelter, and, and people have the ability to have health care. I want people to be able to maximize their human potential. And she says, I want that regardless of race, regardless of class. I want that for everybody. Sounds very similar to what the Du Bois has said as well. But then when, how do you get to that culturally? I think then resetting means we have to recognize that if that is our objective, then what have been the best practices that have helped us get closer to that objective in, in terms of two things? Number one, the external struggle, which we know. And as you say, Jackie, the internal struggle to build some type of cultural grounding. This isn't like I don't make the distinction between cultural nationalists and revolutionary nationalists. I think that's an artificial imposition. And uh, it's unfortunate we continue to use that language. By cultural grounding, I mean ways of being in the world that allow us to build these healthy relationships. And we have so many examples of that from every period of our existence. And by that, I mean the, the couples I named before, but not only that, the communities. The idea that when we see um, the women of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, when you see Bernice Johnson Reagan, when you see Colia Clark, when you see uh, Shirley Sherrod, you see 
the men they are either partnered with or married to, or more importantly, you see the community of men and women. And I'm using men and women. I say male and female because, again, I don't want to get into the gender. Realizing gender is a continuity, is, is a continuum biologically and that the social practices of gender also are in a continuity. So we'll get into, you know, absolutes, complete absolutes in terms of these binaries. But we see that the community makes space for them. And when they struggle, they struggle recognizing that community is the ultimate goal. And I say that to say this, I never knew a time, the time I knew Dory Ladner, when she shied away from the blistering critique of sexism in any moment. But it's a distinction made between the internal critique that we're having and must have because we're not going to make it to liberation by ourselves and the idea of an external conversation coming in and imposing its views on what we're doing. It's almost like, and then when somebody says, yeah, you know, because as women, hope, slow your roll. We in solidarity, but you need to stand out there for a minute. Why? Because you've helped quite enough. <laughs> this blistering that we're doing right now doesn't set aside the external threat we face. So I only say that as, as a kind of a background because when I think about contemporary pairings, and I think this is where intergenerational dialogue is so important. Right there, um, uh, Mama Zahara Simmons her and her partner, Michael, one-time partner, they were married for one time, they were in SNCC, they just published a memoir called um, State on Freedom. We had a bunch of Freedom School students around the country read it last summer, and then they came in on Zoom and had dialogue. They were at the SNCC office right down there on Martin Luther, what is now Martin Luther King. And mm -hmm. you see them struggling with each other. Of course, right there in Atlanta, I can yell in Aminata Omoja. And the people around Kilo, like, what yes, is yes. the collective Chokwe and, and Nubia Lumumba? Of course, their children running Jackson with all the difficulties, all the challenges. The idea is nobody's coming in. Rosa and Raymond Parks leaving Alabama, going to uh, Detroit. And then Chokwe Lumumba, because he worked with Rosa Parks in the office of John Conyers when they get in the shootout in Jackson. That's who he calls, as we know. He calls Rosa Parks. But Rosa Parks isn't an individual who lives outside of a community. And when we talk about Claudette Colvin, who is still walking the earth, still in New York. Claudette Colvin, of course, people say, well, you know, they didn't pick her to, to be the, the face of the movement because she was pregnant. She wasn't married. It didn't mean that ultimately she and that boy didn't stay together. And it didn't mean she wasn't in the movement because she is, she along with four other girls become the plaintiffs in Browder versus Gale, which is the case that went to the Supreme Court that broke the back of the bus a boycott, a bus uh, segregation in Montgomery. But it's all engendered around community. If community is the objective, I think we can attack these issues of sexism, these issues of patriarchy, which have affected all of us, which have affected men in a way that has us almost echoing in many ways, almost a blackface version of whiteness, and that has affected women in ways, I think, that include the idea that approximating power in a society is to approximate a form of maleness, which it becomes, it just becomes a mess. How we extricate ourselves from that, I don't have a good answer for that, except to say that I think we have to be kind to each other. We have to, in the words of one of our elders, uh, Mariba Kelsey, he and his partner are in Atlanta. Mama Niambi Kelsey and Baba Mariba Kelsey, that's who recruited us into ASCAP back in the 80s. Uh, they're there now. In fact, he will be 99 in, in June. Um, they, they, in fact, they are, they are, he is from the Pittsburgh community. So interestingly enough, one of them elders that goes back to the Pittsburgh of the 1940s and 50s, he went to <laughs> Washington High School, uh, uh, bro, Brother Kalanji. That would be a very interesting conversation for us to have in another context. But anyway, because he, he part of the Pittsburgh that precedes the struggle for Pittsburgh today. And he has some very interesting things to say about that. But as he always says, can we agree to agree? We're right. not going to agree on everything, but if, if our objective is to build community, then the blistering, the necessary, the trenchant, what do you call it, the rapier uh, of critique must be applied and can be applied, but ultimately, not but, let me not use that conjunction. And it is applied with the idea that the ultimate objective is healing and community. I think that's how we have to have that conversation. And we can't not have it because we ain't going to be free if we don't. Without a doubt. Listen, I mean, only, first of all, this is live. I got people asking, is the show live? We are live and direct. Uh, <laughs> folks is going to see this later. It's 9.32 p.m. You know what I'm saying? Eastern time. You know what I mean? And, 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 and you, ain't, you ain't going nowhere, so don't even try to act like it neither one of y'all. 
<laughs> um, this is RSTV on Black Power Media. And for the folks in the chat, if you're loving what you see, put a black fist up. I'm 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 going, I'm gonna just go on record and say, look, once a month, Dr. Carr, Jackie, and myself, we gotta find time once a month. So at least one Friday out the month. Dr. Carr, can I get a commitment, man? I mean, you know, I, yeah, I, 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 I could be there. I could be there for that because you know, when, whenever I get off here, I'm gonna stay up all night anyway, because we'll be going, I think, tomorrow morning we're at our 213th saturday consecutive saturday uh with karen hunter you know we do this in class thing right on, right on. for a couple of hours so i fridays my fridays are always i'm doing this so i'm happy to to well, join well, well tell, tell tell karen you got a new friday gig you'll be rolling with <laughs> ro rolling with riot starters you know what i mean so look, look, i'm with y'all man everything's everything okay. is good <laughs> okay okay y'all y'all cool with that i see some fish showing up in the chat Put your black fist up. Y'all think we should do this every Friday? I, I, I went from one Friday. I'm going to say every Friday. What y'all think? No. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, do that. Right? You know, some of the Fridays, the travel Fridays. Actually, I'm going to be in New Orleans. Okay. Friday. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. so we, we can pre-record too, but we do, we're going to do oh, okay. at least one well, Friday. No. <laughs> no, I can't do that. <laughs> Y'all trying we, to work we, me back to death. Goodness. That, no, hey, hey, I ain't gonna tell the audience what you you see all these black fists is going on in here. So I don't I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, they, got, they got black fists in the I, I told, yeah, I told yeah, put the black fists yeah. up, they with it. Yeah, let's do you know it. Let's saying? do it once a month. Oh, Y'all ain't no. doing this. No, 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 have mercy. No, you know what I'm saying? I, I think I think they're feeling it. Yes, you know what I'm saying. You know what? Next time I'm somebody said they put a fist up and they knew how. <laughs> <laughs> Next anyway, time I bring my nightcap and I can't guarantee it, what it, happens. It, when it, it, it's all good. That's Listen, all man. Right. Hey. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> y'all ain't, ain't gonna get me started up in here. But listen, um, you know, you water in your cup. So <laughs> yeah, right. it's clear. Oh, no, we got it's dirty water. We got we got a uh, oh, dirty okay. We we got we got a stop snitching pro policy here here. At yes sir, yes sir. Now yes, sir. I, I, I don't know what they do on the other platforms. I'm saying right here at RCP. Jack Jack, you know better. You know I had some water with me up in Virginia. I don't even know why you act right now. That's true. That's true. Okay, I, I okay. had the special okay. water. It's it's very good. Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. No. 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 You you and your aunt. Anyway, moving right along. <laughs> You go bring the baby into it too. I'm, I'm, I'm putting everybody in the baby too. Yeah, I'm Nino Brown. Baby, this too. Don't you snitch? <laughs> see, see. Yeah, we got it. Look, it stays of what happens at happily natural stays at happy natural. How of that? Look, no, but, but, hey. but, you know, but that's part of community too, though, in the sense that um, it's funny because people would, you know, we stare, we stare. Well, we know this because all three of us have been. I hate to say victims of it, but and so many of us, we often stereotype struggle as the only mode of being. Jack, it's funny. I, I remember one time you all were talking about a meetup for Black Voices for Peace and how important it was and is to have those moments of community that aren't just about, you know, fighting the system. You got to be able to regenerate and heal. And one of the things that was at this, you know, I, I've never seen elders have as much fun as when the SNCC elders get together. <laughs> right before COVID, they were planning the 60th anniversary of SNCC. And then, of course, COVID hit. And so this would have been maybe the December 2019. Anyway, they were at the Civil War Museum having we having a meeting there, Frank Smith's place. And of course, you know, my Dory and all of them were there. And several of those folks have made transition, including my Dory since then. And then everybody went over to Ben's Chili Bowl to eat. And so we're sitting, I was sitting next to Zahara Simmons. I never forget. We're sitting there talking. And I'm, I looked over and I, Charlie Cobb and Bob Moses, of course, Bob Moses has made a, made a transition since then. They were sitting there and whatever. And Bob Moses was famously, if you didn't know his rhythm, you might mistake his kind of quiet demeanor as stoicism. But he was funny as hell. <laughs> Bob Moses just sitting, he usually just sit there very taciturn, just, you know, 
whatever Charlie Cobb had said to him, they was cracking up. They looked like t two teenage boys. And I was like, this. see, this is the thing we often miss in struggle. Yeah. You know, ain't nobody funnier than Black Nationalists. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> I mean, you can mimic everybody. You got smoke for everybody. Even when you watch the morning, the remix morning show. I mean, the jokes write themselves. It's like, and it gets to the point where if these people weren't friends, there would be fists being thrown <laughs> in this. And even they may end up being some bros. But I'm saying not to say that. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying not to say that. The idea that we have to struggle 24 hours a day. We have to, we have to be awake 24 hours a day. We have yes. to, people will let people kill themselves if it means that those people will have their material conditions improve. And I'm saying I have to say on a Friday night yeah. at 20 yeah. minutes to 10 after you did three solid hours, Jackie, and then pulled over mm -hmm. for another coming on too at any That's moment. Supposed you, to do. I'm going to get a nap, please. Because I do not want to see Abdus tonight in my dreams <laughs> <laughs> saying, bruh, really? This is what we doing? No, if, no, if, I'm if, telling if, you if, 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 if I'm gonna show up in my dream. We're gonna have a drink, but listen, look, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no, I look, is she still here a little bit longer though? Cause I, look, man, I'm telling you, <laughs> answers are real, we all know it. So, I, hey, listen, I, I, I don't want no smoke from no heavyweight listen. ancestors tonight. Hey, hey, listen, listen, <laughs> he's, he's a heavyweight ancestor. I don't want no, he, smoke you do like you had a punch, too, from Jersey, too. But listen, brother, brother. I, I'm, I'm gonna say this real quick though for, for, for the viewers. Um, we are. We have 253 people watching us live right now. We are absolutely okay. grateful. I'm going to ask that folks share this link because we did get cut off in the beginning. So we had to start over. I know people are still hitting me up asking what happened to the show. Y'all got to pay attention. I wasn't going to say it was you, Jackie. Stop snitching on yourself. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's my principles, man. It's my principles. <laughs> this conversation be very different. Yeah, yeah. Nah, because it, it, Greg and I, we've been somewhere else. You see, he's already talking about ancient Kemet. He went all the way to ancient Kemet. I was like, I went back to First World Alliance real quick. You know oh, what I mean? And, and, and when you was talking, I'm talking about Dr. Jeffries. I'm thinking about Dr. Jeffries talking oh, about uh, the, the West. And basically, yeah. the, the three things the West is good for is domination, destruction, and death. You understand no, what I'm saying? So you, you would get no life. No, Going way. back to, uh, I believe it's Chinua Chibe talking about the desert yeah. and the stream. The yes. United States, the West is definitely the desert. It will suck you dry. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? We yeah. need all of you because of because you. this is it, it, it's very important. But let me, now, let, first, me, let, me, let me say right quick before you say before we leave first world again. Right on. Oh yeah, we uh, definitely got to stay on first world. Yeah, because well, Jackie was great. talking about the tapes. Well, yeah, well, so, yeah, of course. But I'm just yeah, thinking about yeah. the, the, the 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 partnerships again. Uh, whether it be Leonard Rosler, Jeffries, and shout out to you know uh, Bob Lynn. He had had some recent health challenges. He's on the men. He's doing he's doing okay over there in Brick City. But, right. but you know, but at the center of First World, as you know, Kalaji, and so many others know, at the center was a partnership. Louise right. Jones, Mama Kepa Neptis, and her and her right. husband, Baba Bill Jones. That right. that duo, woman and man, again. To, to the point you raised earlier, Jackie, about how these things have been excluded. They've been narrated incorrectly. It's not factual. Right. Right. And anyone who was in these formations will quickly say, because this is why I don't get down with all these academics writing these books these hmm. days. Even though I will read all of them, I don't I thought trust, it was just me. No, but, but I don't trust none of the narratives. These academics, yeah. first of all, I don't trust nobody writing about Black nationalists and Pan-Africanists that's not in movement formation with them. The I'm only thing I'm around the corner. I'm about to jog around the corner. I'll be back. No, 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 no. Say it again. <laughs> the, only, no, the only reason I read those books, and I do read them yeah. all, the reason I read mm -hmm. them is to make sure that I haven't missed any of the information or, 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 or documents that I need to know about. Other than that, sure. their, their narrative is worthless. It's absolutely yeah. worthless. I mean, close to right left. I ain't gonna name no names. I mean, but you know, Abena Walker just made transition here in DC, mm, one of the key okay. sisters struggling in the African uh independent school movement, you know. Yes. Uh, and so it's very important. But I only I only wanted to mention uh Mama Keffa and, and Baba Bill Jones because no, no, without a doubt, because they, they were the deans for folks who don't right. know, First World yeah. Alliance was That's a right. university of sorts. It's what we it it, it was a living, breathing version of what of, of, of my efforts here at RSTV. Every yes. Saturday yes. in the big church in Harlem, yes. you will go there. You will see everybody from a, a Dr. Ben, a Dr. Clark, a Wade Nobles, uh, Francis Quest Wilson, 
uh Mama Marimba, you know what I'm saying? Uh 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 I forgot got uh Charles uh, Fitz, name. Jamie Carruthers, Kabin, yes, Edward Scobie. Listen, <laughs> no, keep going. Let, let, let uh, me tell you something, Renoko Rashidi. Renoko Rashidi I had, Adams. No, let, let me tell you something, Greg. I had the opportunity to open up there as a youngster to do the poem by uh uh Listerbelt Middleton and to talk about political prisoners. On the origin of things. I just I was just at Columbia, yes. South Carolina, giving the Listerbelt uh Middleton lecture last month. On the origin I got up there. Things. Come on, I, brother. I got Come up on. there and 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 they, they let me do the poem and I spoke on political prisoners. I say to this day, First World Alliance was the Madison Square Garden. It was it was Africa here in the US. You got you had the slave theater and shout out to the slave theater. You know what I'm saying? And and oh. and uh our ancestor Alton Maddox, who we talked about. Uh, oh, remember, remember Kalaji? Alton yeah. and Leola Maddox, another couple. Yes. Oh, no oh, question. Oh, wow. Without a doubt, without a doubt, without a doubt. Yes, doubt. Sir. Yes, doubt. Sir. yes yeah. sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, First World Alliance to me was 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 the garden. And no for problem. me, it's like I, I was uh I had the opportunity to be raised on the national side, but going to First World Alliance was that was that uh cultural aspect that's where you got the historical aspect yeah. of thing that's where you saw a theophile banger you know what i'm saying who worked with uh our brother uh uh shake out the joke shake out the joke yes sir right. and, and and so many others uh man and it's it's like just just mentioning first world alliance i'm sorry i'm i'm going off track yep. but just mentioning first world alliance all the giants that came through and, and when see see the thing is uh greg and jackie a lot of these folks they think I'm younger than I am at times. You understand <laughs> what I'm saying? And they think that I'm just talking shit like I just got just my ego and I'm, yes, he's yes, arrogant yes, or whatever. Yes, I yes, studied yes. at the feet of, of freedom fighters from the BLA, from the Black Panther Party, from the Black Guerrilla Family, uh, from, from SNCC, from the Revolutionary Action Movement, from First World Alliance. I knew the Dr. Benz, the Dr. Clarks. The Dr. Oh. Jeffries, the Smalls, and all them folks. You know what I mean? So, so when we talk about this, the Francis Quest Wells and so on and so forth, I ain't just talking because I got a mouth. I know some people think that you know they 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 have a problem with it. And 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 the thing is, you know, in the mortal words of Pop, if you would walk a mile in my shoes, then you'd be crazy too. You don't know what it took to get me right here. On, you don't know, on. you don't know the, the the project hallways, the shootouts, and all of that mm -hmm. type stuff before before i got to this particular spot right here so you know mm -hmm. shout out to those people who have lived their lives who have fought and gone on the the, the uh the baba herman ferguson's you, you mentioned Ian lua, lua ferguson shout out to uh uh muhammad ahmed max stanford who's still with I us did. up in philly yes these, these are people who 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 we don't talk about enough and, and, and that's why I appreciate down there in Atlanta by uh, Baba Mukasa and Mama Mona Dada. No question. With, with, without a doubt. Listen, I remember one time I was stressed the hell out. Mukasa <laughs> called me one day. This was like maybe about 18 years ago. I said, man, it, it's, it's rough out here. He said, yeah, man, it's hard, ain't it? I said, yeah. He said, make you want to feel like quitting, huh? I said, yeah. He said, that's why we took the job. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, ain't, ain't no, <laughs> this is what we do. This is why we here. You know and, what and I mean? It's so so important you saying that in the context of women, because those two, when I think of Baba mm -hmm. Mukasa and Mama Mimunga, his birthday's the same day as my mother's birthday. But go ahead. Oh, really? February eighteenth. Oh, wow. See, see oh, okay, I'm not assassination. Yeah. To every day, Don Kimothi, the day of assassination. Yes. yes. See, no, no, the eighteenth of February, same day. The so, so yeah, the, yeah. The, the 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 relationship, our relationships. When and, and this is the thing that I think we have to do a lot more of. In fact, we're planning on doing something with them shortly there. Uh, the president of the Southern Region of the Association for the Study of Classical African Civilizations, uh, Reba Kelsey, there, is, is, you know, kind of floated this idea. The, you know, asking these couples that are still with us, how did y'all meet? What has sustained you? This is the thing that allows us to see it. And it does, it destroys the narrative that somehow we have internally been at each other's throats. And it also allows us to see when problems arise, when conflicts arise, how have we solved them? Because if our, if our objective is to agree to agree and get to liberation, then confronting the contradictions, confronting the tensions is with the intent to find ways to resolve them. And listening to you, when you hear 
the two of them talk about how they move through the world what begins to emerge is see these are these are ways of relationships between women and men there's right. nothing you know i, I used yeah. to joke all the time say you know civilization is a conversation between women if you just sit and listen to black women, you will begin to understand the way because there is no hiding place for females in terms of the the future of the species. So these exactly. aren't just idle conversations women have with each other. You see what I'm saying? And to the degree that you can interact with or most importantly, listen. Man, I learned the most I've learned in my life is sitting and listening to black women talk, particularly elder black women. And Dory Ladner was one of those women. Listen, man, I, I don't, you know, I don't, when, when I hear, you know, the thing is, it's like some of these, some of these discussions, it took me a while to even grasp because I grew up with strong black women. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. My grandmother had seven daughters. You understand what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm going to repeat that. My grandmother had seven daughters mm -hmm. and, and I come from a fighting family. If you haven't figured that out yet. You understand what I'm saying? I come from the first time I ever got into the fight into a uh, into a fight with the police. I repeat, the first time I ever got into a, a fight with the police is when they tried to come for my mother when I was 14. You understand right. what I'm saying? So, so so we come from a long line of mm. of, 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 of of throwing them throwing them bowls. Um no. I, I want to say definitely um my brother Tafari is in the uh in the chat. Shout out to the uh hey. Mazimoyos here in uh oh yeah. No question. Um, in, in, in Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? And so oh, many no. others. We, we can go on and on. Um actually uh, that's good. The last time I think I saw I saw them, they were at uh the Asa Hilliard conference over at the mm -hmm. AUC. And there we get Asa Hilliard and Mama Patsy Joe Hilliard, who's still there in East Point, Georgia. But Mama yeah, right Morello on. had come to talk about and then Wade and Vera Nobles both yes. there. Oh, wow. was a part, again, wow. I mean, but but yeah, they were there. And again, there was a, another example, community. And, right. and within community, we can solve any problem we have. And we got a lot of problems, but we can solve them if community is at the center of our practice. So shout out to them for sure, brother. Shout out, yeah. Hey, shout hey, out hey, while, while we at it, tomorrow is the, the born date of uh, Walter Rodney. So we shout out Walter and Patricia Rodney. Okay. You understand oh, what I'm saying? So, so, you know, as, yeah. as, as we, we keep this thing going, we'll be, we'll be here giving shout outs to the end of the day, no, y'all. Don't but, get it twisted. Until 1130. But, <laughs> yeah. but, in the context of, but in the context of a conversation centered on the transition, most recent transition of Dory Ladner, and with women as the point of departure, it's re, these shout outs are very intentional. They're reinforcing right. the value right. at the center of mm -hmm. this. So, so thank you. Yeah, no question. Yeah. Mm. But I, I, but but definitely you all that are checking us out. We're gonna we're gonna rock with you a little while longer because I know that my co-host and and I'm I'm gonna say co-host because uh uh my brother Greg Carr disagreed. We doing at least once a month. Greg, Jackie, and myself on RSTV. Y'all, we cool once a month. Jackie. I do not. I am not sure. Do not. I must be, I've got to be the only black person who gets jobs without even wanting one. That's okay, Jackie. You you in the movement. Let me tell you something, man. Nobody got time for all that. We, we just that man, listen. They ain't got nothing to do with me. Hey, 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 Greg, Greg. Now, usually, usually I I I, I submit to the request of the elders, but oh, Jackie know how we got on this second string today. Yeah, I don't pay hey. attention to nobody. Look, anyway. Jack, you ain't got plenty, you got plenty of elders. You get a phone call, bro. You know how that works, oh. man. Yeah, it's all good. Mubarak. I got a John Mubarak in one ear calling me. So, sister, listen, man. What y'all gonna they, do they, they, on with this such and such and such as I don't nah, know, John. Listen, what you want? I, me to I, 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 shout I don't out know. To, what do you want me to shout do? Shout out to a John Mubarak. Shout out to a John Mubarak and Bap. This FTP movement tonight. So I just want y'all to notice what we do around here. So ain't gonna be no no. I, well, you know the OG. They ain't got nothing to do. What we talking about over here. This 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 is a different fly zone over here. Tonight. But anyway. <laughs> but anyway, definitely, definitely shout out to all the freedom fighters out there. Uh, some of y'all be like, oh, he said such and such. Shout out to the comrades uh who's who are putting in that work out there. We appreciate no y'all. Um no I want I want to say too, real quick before I forget. Um, as you see in the ticker at the bottom, FTP 20 hip hop martial arts and activism conference will be taking place okay. during Black August 16th, 17th, 18th. That is the weekend of Marcus Garvey's birthday um, right here in Atlanta. It is our 20 year anniversary of the FTP movement. I know a lot of people try to front like they don't know we've been putting in this work for 20 years, but it's OK. All the stuff that we do ain't on the Internet. 
You understand what I'm saying? But if you come to these streets, then you know what the build is. You know what I mean? So I want to say shout out to my brother Balo Goon, who's in the chat, uh, and a number of other different folks. But um, yeah, yeah. So I want I want to um before we get lost, I know we 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 don't have much time, but I want to touch on Fannie Lou Hamer because I think the Fannie Lou Hamer is another um uh freedom fighter, her and folks like Queen Mother Moore and so many others who are, are glossed over. Yes. Yes. Who are glossed over. So if we can talk about Fannie Lou Hamer a little bit and uh, you you good, Jackie? No, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm just messing with you. You know, you're my sister. So no, no, you know, for I'm folks not, who don't I'm, know. I'm OK. I'm, all right, I'm, all right. I might yeah. dip out and get my uh, um, my, my night while y'all yeah. while y'all do this. Go, go, go get your water and come back. Stop front. Please. You know, no. what we do around here. Please. Okay. No question. No question. Yeah. Oh, Miss Hamer, you know, Fannie Lou Hamer, man, is uh, and of course. I'll just mention him here at the onset, uh, Pap Hamer, her husband. Yes. Well, um, and their two children. In fact, uh, the youngest of their two released a book on her, not her biological children, because as you know, as we know, uh, the state of Mississippi uh, violated her body, uh, took mm -hmm. out her reproductive system, so she could not have biological children. But Fanny and Pap Hamer uh, adopted two children. Mm -hmm. And so the youngest of them, I think Cookie was her nickname. She she released a book on her mother last year, and she made transition uh, recently, so I lift her as well. Um, Ms. Hamer, who made transition 40, 46 years ago, 1977, but it was March the 14th, 1977. So we just passed the anniversary of her transition. Um, uh, born in Sunflower County, uh, Mississippi, 20, uh, 19 siblings. Um, of course, uh, we know her because of her relentless struggle. Um, and a couple of things strike, strike, are very striking me about Fannie Lou Hamer. Of course, there's conventional narratives. We know that she merges in public consciousness after having uh, been threatened and kicked. She and Pap kicked off of their land as sharecroppers. Uh, she had been working out there uh, in the cotton field since she was like six years old. And the truck pulled up. And she got on, started picking cotton. Uh, she dared try to register to vote. And they threw her off her land. Um, and and it was August 1962. This is the story that Mama Dory always told about how they encountered Fannie Hamer shortly after they had been evicted on that y'all school bus going to uh, register to vote, leaving Rueville, where they were, to the courthouse in Indianola, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And all the white boys up there with the strap, they rifles, you know, with their courage in their hands exactly. as opposed to between their legs. And trying to, and they, these fearless black people led by this fearless black woman busted up in there. And of course, they headed back home after they were not allowed to vote and they arrested them. That was the famous moment when uh, the police accused the bus driver of driving a bus that was the wrong color. <laughs> and Mrs. Hamer on that bus, as they're harassing the driver, started to sing. And hmm. Fannie Hamer's voice, of course, that clarion call that would come out of her throat. Her most famous rendition, of course, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, became one of the signature moments of cultural meaning making in that long freedom struggle. And that that was the voice that once made public was never stilled until she made transition. Um, she, you know, two years later, of course, during Mississippi Freedom Summer, uh, she helped was one of the main organizers of the Mississippi Democratic Freedom Party. And that's, of course, the, we talk about the famous assault on the Democratic Party in Atlantic City in 1964. Um, Dory Ladner, of course, there for that as well. The previous uh, year, of course, the March on Washington, Dory Ladner was there. Dory, <laughs> she tell a funny story about um, she and Dick Gregory in conversation. Uh, of course, they were both at the March on Washington in 1963. Just as just a footnote about Dory Ladner. And she said, you know, uh, we tell people we didn't know it was going to be all that. <laughs> we said, I have a dream. I'm like, what? what's going on? By the way, let me ra let's raise the name of another sister, a sister who Martin Luther King shamelessly ripped off because he told her he was going to use her concept, her phrasing, her rep repetitive uh, phrase, I have a dream. And that was the great theologian and minister Prithia Hall. In fact, mm. uh, the, sister, the books in the Prithia other Hall. Hall. Hey, 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 hold, hold on. The, the Greg Carr just said he that, that, that Martin Luther King 
did 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 a uh, a, 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 a five <laughs> finger discount? Oh, no question. But he told her. He told her they were at a they were at a meeting. Yeah. I want to say it was in Georgia, and it, it, I would be it would take me forever because you know I got so many books around. Here. It, it, it's all good. Hand, hand to your business. We I, we just no, had I, Ayana. We just had Ayana Gregory on a few days ago, so shout out to her. Yeah, Ayana, no and, question. And, 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 and I told her because she she said she got a one minute. There's a sidetrack right here. I told her I was gonna have you on, and she said, "Yeah, um, he's supposed to be getting me to Howard." I said, "Yeah, my brother gonna get you to Howard because I know Greg Carr." He said, "She said, I ain't, I ain't, she said, I ain't never performed to Howard." I we said, got, "Lord we, have mercy, we gonna get What's it going in. on." Well, you know, Howard, Howard, like HBCU, I'm glad you said that because uh, right. you know, I shared that department every state for 12 years, but there's a there's a pitched battle at all HBCUs, but Howard is probably the most acute in it. You know, universities oh, no. are set up as ways to replicate the class formation. And, you know, Jared talks about this all the time. Mm -hmm. but, I, but I work at the lead dog in Nestle. And the, the Howard University, as Kwame Ture said, has everything in the African world and it's opposite. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, the struggle over the question of the black university is something we had to talk about another time. But long story short is it would have been a lot easier for me to get Yana on um, probably four or five years ago. But the, the, the neoliberal um, project that was executed under the immediate past president of Howard University has been devastatingly effective i think we're in we're in a stage now not just howard but everywhere where blackness the 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 the, the performance of blackness has become um almost exquisite in its capacity to mute truly kind of progressive or revolutionary thrust um again you know i mean i ain't mad at beyonce knows because clearly beyonce is gonna make all the money one moment she's yimmy yah then she's got a marching band. Now she got red, white, and blue with a flag on. All these trolls just bring the coins. Jane Brown. Her. She has Jane exactly. Brown. With, she with she and her husband, impression. you know, she and her husband have mastered the capacity. Anytime yeah. you know you can have Negroes in orange jumpsuits dancing at halftime in the Super Bowl, you have to concede that these Negroes have figured out a way to turn hate into profit. So I mean, I ain't mad. From black saying, berets to orange to orange with, jumpsuits. No question. She a panther. She yimmy ya. Hey, I ain't mad at her. Okay, All right, ladies, let's get in formation. She, but she it, might be great. Not card, getting maybe. in that woman's formation. You know I mean, <laughs> we can take a formation across the street somewhere. To the formation to have us ending up right in the middle of the damn Pentagon. <laughs> make that money. Make that money. And look, I'm saying, I mean, there's not a demographic that Beyonce has not figured out a way to bring into her beloved capitalist community from Big Freedom all the way over to Burner Boy. I mean, it's like I can bring everybody into yeah. uh, so anyway, but give me the loop. Um, give me the loop. Yeah, give me, right. loop. give me the loop. Oh, no like, oh my god, she'd have messed up Burna Boy too. Damn. Yeah, oh, no question. Black is king. I mean, when you see the narrative, capitalism don't discriminate. It's a pan African capitalism. I mean, I gotta give that Beyonce is the chef's kiss of, of how to make that money. So I, I mean it yeah. is what it is. Her and you know, yeah, you know, but 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 what I was gonna say though is that you know, thinking about how we resolve these contradictions becomes a difficult thing, and so. Let, let's you know, not lose Fanny though. We don't want, we don't want you know what no, I'm saying? No, no, no. We well, definitely no, gotta no. deal with the contradictions. No, 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 cool, no. Cool. This this is where I was going with Fanny Lou Hamer. Oh, yeah, Miss Hamer is narrated as this poor sharecropper mm -hmm. who kind of you know mm -hmm. Jesus loving, just wants to vote, American hero. Man, put that narrative aside when she connects with these young people, and mm -hmm. you see the same thing um um with the people that they talked about were the people who who, 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 who showed them what to do, their jagness. They said, when we, when we came into Mississippi, most of the people there, the overwhelming majority of people who were in that struggle were local people. Because mm -hmm. Joyce and Dory Latner are from Hattiesburg. Bob Moses from New York, for sure. Um, Marimba Ania, you know, is from New York by way of Chicago coming down into Mississippi. But the, major, the vast majority of those people were local people. And when, you know, uh, AK writes his book, We Will Shoot Back, Charlie Cobb right. writes his book, That Nonviolent Stuff Will Get You Killed, they're mm -hmm. telling story after story after story of women and men who yeah. welcome these young people in and who say, we're going to show y'all how we struggle. Mm -hmm. And they speak, yeah. we, they speak about them with almost reverence. When you talk about Vernon Damon, when you talk about Fannie Lou Hamer, we talk about those Mississippians who did yes. that work. 
uh, Willie Peacock, when you talk about uh, what's my man, Hollis, uh, Hollis Watkins, are you, they, they're looking at them like like revered figures. Now, so so finally, Miss Hamer, Miss Hamer makes her national debut in many ways with that confrontation at the Rules Committee in the 1964 uh, Democratic National Convention in Atlantic City, where she says, I question America. And she tells the story of having been beaten in prison, how they threw her off the plantation, she and Pap, how all this. And then Lyndon Johnson calls the press conference at the White House to get her off television. And then they mm -hmm. replay it later at night and the, and the country mm -hmm. still sees her. Mm -hmm. And then of course, you, you see her as this iconic figure, but I'll end with this. Mrs. Hamer from 1964 to her transition 13 years later, I mean, in many ways, that is the most interesting part of her public work, right. because it is after that, the freedom vote, where they're going to send people. She ran for Congress on that Mississippi Democratic Freedom uh, Party ticket. Mm -hmm. When they come back after 64, though, it's very interesting. Talk about rest. Talk about recuperation and rejuvenation. Harry Belafonte. And I saw that Julie, uh, his uh, wife, uh, was in a uh, facility in California. She just made transition earlier this month. Oh, wow. just, it just came out. They just released the obit tonight in the oh. New York Times because I think it was they hadn't told people. Uh, she was 96. But um, Belafonte raised some money. Julian Bond, uh, John Lewis, a number of people in SNCC, including Mrs. Hamer, he got money so that they could go to Africa. And when you read what Julian Bond says, and John Lewis didn't talk about this too. When Mrs. Hamer got there, they got they were received by the president, of course, as we know, the president, Sekou Toure, Ahmed Sekou Toure. He said, Toure comes out to welcome them and he sweeps Mrs. Hamer up in his arms. He, you know, he got the booba on, you know what I'm saying? And like, all right. And then at some point over the arc of the time they were in Guinea, they go looking for Miss Hamer. And they say, where is Miss Hamer? We don't know where she is. They find her in the marketplace with the sisters, getting her hair. <laughs> and right. it was Julian Bond told the story. Julian Bond said, she didn't speak a word of French and these sisters didn't speak a word of English, but somehow they were talking to each other in this place. And they said, here comes some white Peace Corps workers. This is the external factor. Miss <laughs> Hamer at some point says to them, why are y'all here? If you want to help black people, you should have stayed in the United States. Why did y'all come all the way over to Africa to help? She's putting an international, this ain't Fannie Hamer at the Democratic National Convention. This is her in the cotton field in Mississippi. She's in Africa confronting foreign policy and intervention in Africa and white That's students who want to be, a, no, right. do that domestically. And then, this is where I end with it. I've never seen this put together, and that's, I don't, I'm not saying it doesn't exist. So let me just say that I'm not one of them people say, "Oh, I'm working on this. I'm writing about it." No, I don't like that. That so and so. What did what did uh, KRS once say? I'm so and so. I'm this. I'm that. But they all just wait, wait. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't want to hear that. Oh, I'm, a I'm working on. No hell no. We go from Kimmy to Karis one on here. What y'all know about that? No, you know. Look, you must <laughs> learn, right? But uh, right, but when um, Mrs. Hamer is traveling. And one of the things Dory Ladner did, the Ladner sisters did, they raised money for SNCC, for the Poor People's Campaign, the March on Washington. One of the times they were in New York, Mrs. Hamer was on the same uh, rostrum raising money with Malcolm X, who she mm. knew, who she said she had right. a great deal of respect for. If y'all go search out on YouTube, you can see an interview. There's one interview, that's yeah. actually film. And Miss Hamer says, mm -hmm. you know, I loved Malcolm X. Yeah, you know, I've, I've seen that. You've seen that, right, Jack? I mean, mm -hmm. it's crazy. So, so the thing that, 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 that make this striking about it is Malcolm gives this effusive praise of Fannie Lou Hamer. It's in, it's in Malcolm X Speaks, that collection among other places. Then Mrs. Hamer gets up and she gives her speech. But the thing about it is, when you read it in Malcolm X Speaks, you see Malcolm getting up to introduce her and he gets mm -hmm. up and says, you know, they were just talking about Ogingo Odinga. And I love Ogingo Odinga because he was with the Mau Mau. And he starts about the Mau. You know, Malcolm talks about the Mau Mau. But mm -hmm. here's where the two things don't get put together. The reason he brings up Odinga Odinga, uh, Odinga, Odinga, who, of course, is a Kenyan diplomat, been sent over here by Yomo Kenyatta, and he tours Atlanta. And the SNCC uh, people tell the story about how they wanted to see him because they lying about 
black people in America. And they said, oh, Atlanta is not, it's too busy to hate. And so they go get arrested at the Peachtree Manor uh, uh, diner to protest the fact that these Atlanteans are in here telling uh, the Kenyans that, you know, everything is cool in the United States. Right. The reason Malcolm brings up Oginga Odinga that night where Miss Hamer is on the podium with him to speak is because, and this is where it's never connected. You have to go to, you can go to Voices of the Civil Rights Movement. It's one of the places where you hear a lot of the freedom songs collected, including things that were recorded live. Governor Wallace and in some of those places too. I think about the SNCC singers. There, the SNCC singers, the freedom singers had, had performed before Malcolm got up. The song mm -hmm. they performed, uh, we went down to the peach tree manor to see old Gingo Dinga. They make oh, up a whole story, a fantasy about what they would have said. The police, uh, let me see. Uh, he said, we went down to the peach tree manor to see old Gingo Dinga. The police, he looked mighty hard at old Gingo Dinga. He, he got scared because he was an ex mile mile to see old Gingo Dinga. Then they go into the chorus. Oh, Ginga, oh, Dinga, oh, Ginga, oh, Dinga, oh, Ginga, oh, Dinga, oh, Kenya, who, oh, Ging, and you hear the clouds start clapping, and then they come, I just left some of the Snick singers, Snick Freedom singers down in Selma, and they still, still rocking. You probably saw Chuck Hamlet. You see Charles Nevlet? Yes, yes, yes. That's my man. Every time yes. last time I saw Chuck Nevlet was in Selma with uh Mama Fire, another couple, Fire yes, and yes, Hank Rose, yes. the yes, Fire right. Rose and Hank Hank yeah, 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 yeah. I love one of my favorite songs from the Snick Singers, and I won't sing it tonight, is my man Chuck Neblet. His song, Governor Wallace. Because Chuck Neville, mm -hmm. you know how Chuck Neville tell that story? He said, we done marched all the way to Montgomery. We stand on the steps of the Capitol. And by the way, that statue of Jeff Davis is still there. I spit on it as recently as September. But stand on the steps of the Capitol. Mm -hmm. And I look back, you know, Ebenezer Baptist Church is right down the street. And you can right, see right. All, all the way down into Montgomery. He said, we couldn't see nothing but people. And so Chuck said, you know what? Wallace can't put us all in jail. And on the steps of that Capitol is where he conceived the song that became Governor Wallace. You never can jail us all. So I, I mean, every time I see the snicks, and you know, um, the voice of Selma, she was the one when Joe Biden gave that State of the Union and he said, I want you to stand up. The, ch the sister there, the, 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 the chocolate colored sister that stood up, the elder, she's yeah, yeah. one of the snicks singers. <laughs> she was that's one that's of the snicks singers. If you I, didn't know I, who I, was I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think if that's the one that was there because oh, oh yeah, there she was, was there. Yeah, so there, there was um for, for folks that don't know, uh for the last three years I've been hosting the hip hop, the international hip hop summit. Yeah, yeah. yes, at sir. The, yes at the, sir. At the bloody Sunday joint. This year they had Dead Prez and they had um th this young sister, uh her name is uh man, I'm 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 slipping the name, but she's the, the daughter of uh Dion Ferris. Her name is Baby Tate, actually. You know. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we were actually we went to this awards thing. Shout out to Paradise Gray and uh, my man Minister Server. We went to one of the awards joint. That's why I ran into Ayanna Gregory, uh, ah. uh, um, some of the the snick workers, snick singers, uh, the brothers uh, from the, uh, the Olympians. I uh, can't even think of their name right now. The, John the, Carlos, uh, the, Tommy Smith. John Carlos and Tommy Smith. And also Amanda Seals. So we all oh, yeah, yeah, the same, same function. And uh, there were several other folks I'm not going to name because when I walked in there, clearly they knew who I was. They looking like, who the hell let this Negro in? And, and I, I, I want to shout out the, the sister, the elder sister that kept coming to our table asking who was supposed to have been at the table. No, I wasn't supposed to have been at the table, but I'm at the table. You know what? They, they can't put you right at the table, man. When the elders tell you you're supposed to be there, <laughs> so you ain't hey, got to worry about it. Hey, we, I act like I ain't even speak English. They so looking at me. I'm just like, <laughs> eh. Eh. <laughs> every time she says something, I say, eh. <laughs> see, 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 see. I'm trying to think. Uh, was Ruth, Mama Ruth May Harris was probably there because she always um, comes. 
she, uh, she's a dark skinned heavy set sister. No, that that that's the sister who I uh, can't think her name. They call her the that, voice. That's who you're talking about from the from the. Uh, I, had, I I I wish I'd have loaded up. So I, I I recorded a clip of her singing. Her voice is is. Oh, oh no question. Boy, look no here. Question. They had one white dude. I forgot his name, but you know. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that guy Caravan. I mean, but but again, look, man, yeah. them old white. It was what it was. Right. Look, yeah. man, I'm they sorry. These old Southern white people who were in the movement, they. Oh, hey, man. Oh, hey, listen. It'd be I'm, the first I'm, one I'm, to jump out. No question. Hey, that's all the way live. We we. Hey, listen, man. We 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 keep a white boy in the pocket just in case. Like, <laughs> hey, man, <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs> he keep one in the <laughs> back. I, I, I live in Georgia. <laughs> I organized in Mississippi, I got, Alabama. <laughs> I got a, I got a, you know, you know, it just reminds me of a Marion Barry story with them. Uh, and of course, I say Marion Barry, got to mention Mary Treadwell, got to mention yes, Effie Barry, and of course, mm -hmm. got to mention his widow now, who is still mm -hmm. here, of course. Um, you know, sisters surrounded Marion Barry because Mary Treadwell and Marion Barry, who were married, they, of course, Mary Treadwell was the driving force behind Pride, of course, right, as right. we know. So, I mean, mm -hmm. all these young people, and, and you know this, uh, Jackie, better than I do as a native Washingtonian. So, all these young people about to let them get these jobs in the summer on the Marion Barry Youth Project. Please understand that Mary Treadwell is a name that you should be wearing right next to Marion Barry. So, mm -hmm. I mean, in fact, there's a great exhibit at the Martin Luther King Library for anybody in the DC area. It's an exhibit on the first floor of the library on black women and the struggle in Washington, D.C. Yeah, and it goes back to the 1950s. Fantastic. Oh, it is, isn't it? Oh, my it God. It is really fantastic because there was so much. There's, there's not a lot that, that you know, like catches me like, oh, you know, and I'm all obsessed with <laughs> yeah. it now. Man, Y'all got me trying to like D.C., man. I'm like, you know, y'all talking a whole lot about this. Well, they, got a digital, they got a digital version, but I'm like you. I'm like you, Jackie. When no, I went I'm, down I'm, there, I'm, I'm like, African. I got to feel it. <laughs> I mean, it, it it is fantastic, but but you see Mary Treadwell. There. Yeah, you see her there. Huh? Talk about DC likeness. See, what don't do that. right. Oh, oh I'm, I'm, I'm down like with DC. It. Listen, man, I used to come through DC back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Well, uh, play with fi play with fifty and all that. Last time you came and visited me. Oh, oh, you, oh! I, I ain't get no invitation, Jackie. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, you know nobody you like me on BPM. I'm black and I don't do invitations. I don't do oh, okay, invitations okay. or thank you. We pull it up, Jackie. No, we pull it up. I'm right. pulling up. I know that's we right. Pulling but up. It, I'm glad, glad y'all do it because it reminded me because I didn't finish on I Have a Dream. So I got to tell y'all about that in a minute. But yeah, please, please get on that. And, and before you go, no, no, please get on that. No, before y'all go, I'm whole Queen Mother Moore, y'all, because we're going to have, we cannot close. We got to talk about Queen Mother Moore. But, but let's just talk about. About, the about Martin and Steve. Well, well, the Kelseys and the African Center for Study Worship in Columbus used to bring Queen Mother Moore out for her birthday to Columbus. So I got a chance mm -hmm. to, to meet Queen Mother Moore and sit with her. Of course, she was in advanced age. And of course, the sister who was with her from what's her name? Uh, Klein, she's they called the mayor of, of Harlem. Uh, 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 uh I, I know exactly what you're talking about. My, my you brain is like it'll come to you, it'll come to you, man, because yeah. we the hour is getting late, but um, yeah, yeah. But, Martin Luther King spoke at a um uh well it was a it was a rally, a community organizing rally, a kind of gathering movement rally in Georgia. And Prathia Hall spoke before him, minister, preacher, she's an ancestor now, but she talked about she kept repeating the phrase, I have a dream. And she was laying out this electric kind of vision of a different society, I have a dream. And then she took him back to whatever transportation he was taking out of town. I think it was the airport. And he told her, he said, I really love the way that you phrased that and you framed that. I'm going I'm, I'm to borrow that from you. I'm going to use that from you. So when you hear Martin Luther King say, I have a dream, right. you got to go see Prathia Hall. Prathia Hall was the one who laid the foundation. So, so anyway, I just wanted to mention that. But, you know, it, it, on the Marion Barry thing, is very interesting. At the 50th anniversary of SNCC, thinking about those SNCC singers when you mentioned them, um, they had the 50th anniversary at Shaw University in Raleigh, North Carolina. And if Mama Joyce is listening, she'll get a chuckle out of this. She'll remember this. Um, everybody was there. And so, you know, we 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 had to be there. And so we there with these all the SNCC veterans, Matthew Jones, like I said, the singers, all of them. And so at the luncheon, they had invited uh, what's his name? Eric Holder, attorney general. Of course, they mm -hmm. want to make a big deal. And he's up there. It's a, yeah, the place is full. Oh, you know, y'all did this and we're so happy that you all. Oh, it was so funny because, you know, I'm sitting probably about maybe four or five rows from the front on the far side. It was hundreds of people there. And 
John Lewis was late. So they brought him in a side door and I guess he hadn't had anything to eat. So there was an empty seat next to me and they set John Lewis next to me and said, can you sit up like this facing the crowd so that, so, or the stage so they can't see him? And he sat there and ate a bologna sandwich on white bread. That's when I understood how <laughs> country that big grow from Troy, Alabama was. Anyway. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey you well, we, we got clip. We, we got clip this part where, where John Lewis eating a bologna sandwich on white bread. Brother, <laughs> it, 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 it was, it was, it was, the thing about it is, and this is why, this is why I bring it up in terms of ideology. We often talk about ideology and politics, but at the end of the day, these were human beings. Right. In other words, right. I, I've seen, I've heard them be very critical of John Lewis and some of the choices he made right. and the way, and even, even my majority would talk about that. But one thing about it was to steal their comrade. You see, that's what I'm saying. There's a way to, to, yeah, to yeah, have yeah. that conversation. It's fascinating to me. I only bring that because yeah. you just thought uh, John Lewis is just a regular old black man trying to eat this bologna sandwich before they call him. Get that mayonnaise off your mouth, man. You all right, Elder? Are you good? Are you good? <laughs> yeah, he can go on stage. He can get on stage, right? But anyway, I went through all that to get to this point. Eric Holder <laughs> is up there given the conventional line. Oh, you all saved democracy and you made it possible for me and Barack Obama. And as he's talking, the crowd is listening, but then at the far end of the auditorium, this big ass auditorium in Raleigh, you see people start rising up in waves. You know how some like a celebrity will come in and you see people just start mm -hmm. making noise. They start to, and so Holder, once it gets to be too many people, he just looks like, like he got a deer in the headlights. He don't know what to do. Joyce Ladner, you remember this mama Joyce? Joyce Ladner mm -hmm. is the mistress of ceremonies. She stands up, comes to the podium and saves him by saying, excuse me, Mr. Attorney General, we have to pause. My mayor just came in the room. Marion Barry, yes. <laughs> second chairman of SNCC, understand, yes. that walked in late as he always knew how to walk with that bop. And he, yes. Nick Rose, could not do anything. I'm talking about these are the people in all the documentaries, the freedom fighters. But to them, that is their leader. It was the most <laughs> electric. <laughs> so People try to clown Mary and Barry. I always remind them, y'all know a damn thing about me. It's you like they call the Y'all need to leave that alone. On my mayor's name. But, 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 but you know what, though? You, you know what, though? I, I want to say this. Like, the most important thing that you said, right, is the whole, the whole thing about the comrade, right? We have to know the difference between a comrade and a friend. We get it twisted and we think that because you don't like an individual, whatever, so on and so forth, you know, you, you got to have some beef with them. Right. I don't have to like you. We don't have to be friends. But That's if you're right. smart, you might want to be my comrade because of the fact that I'm clear about where we're headed. Now, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't get it twisted because it, does, it doesn't matter about whether you like bologna sandwiches or whether you're vegan or whatever the hell right. the case is. At the end of the That's day, right. what side of the barricade you on? Now, That's we right. can agree to disagree on everything else. I've been in situations where uh, myself and, uh, and and someone attacked a particular brother who I didn't necessarily care for, but I understand that his he has an important role in our liberation movement and and, and his particular role will benefit us. So okay. I'm in the fight. Now, after we finish rumbling and, and handling that business, we go our separate ways. You ain't got to be talking about no thank you and all that. Type. You know, we don't rock like that, dude. Just go ahead on. You know, <laughs> go eat your bologna sandwich and, and let's keep it moving. You know what I mean? And that, that's we got to be clear. Bologna like this. You go stop. Well, I, I used to eat bologna marriage. sandwiches back in the day, but you know, I don't, I don't eat. I don't eat meat. So. <laughs> we, we, we can wind up. I mean, because there's so many things you can think. Some things just can't be resolved. They just happen to Without be. You know, and, and I mean, a great example of that is you know Hakeem Jeffries. Here's the guy who is the is, is the minority leader in the yes. federal yes. legislature. His uncle, him and his brother, Hassan, yeah. who was the president, uh -huh. they were on that trip to Kemet in 1987 when ASCAC took a thousand black people to Kemet because of yeah, their right. uncle and auntie, Leonard Jeffries and Rosalind Jeffries. And yeah. when he <coughs> rose in the Congress, I thought to myself, how long is it going to be before they hang Hakeem's uncle around his neck like a lay? And that's mm -hmm. what lets me know that he is firmly under control in the legislature because that man's uncle was one of the most hated Negroes in the country. <laughs> he Rock the hey, hey, like, 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 my, like my grandfather say, say, who's one of the most cursing cats I know, tell the truth and stay in church. We, we, <laughs> we going to talk about him? 
Exactly. Ross Bar- Boss Baraka. You know what I'm saying? So let's, let's Rath, not get look, it. Man, look, Ras yeah. Baraka. And again, again, yeah. you can't say Amir Baraka couple. without saying Amina Baraka. No question. Two, two together. So, oh, yeah. you okay. know what? Betty Mae Fikes. Betty Mae Fikes is the name of the sister, uh, the voice of Selma. She was the one that said it. You probably saw right her. She okay. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Betty Mae Fikes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I know so, I know we're we're real short on time. We're about to end, Kalanji. Yes, ma'am. We yes. we okay. we gonna end. Um, okay. I do I do. No, wanna... I'll, save, I'll save that question for next time since you no, make no, no, this, no, 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 this, no, no, this question for next time. You sure? Now, okay. Come on with it. Don't don't don't. You scared? No. Oh, sure. scared. Yeah. Yeah. She said an hour is long, and she been on. Look, Jackie ain't been on since we've been on. Jack been on. She did oh, three okay. hours of hardcore work. Oh yeah, that's right. I that's cannot right. believe you just asked me. Am I scared? I'm- <laughs> Right. <laughs> we're playing with you. You already know. So, 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 so we 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 gonna close out. But before we close out, we need some words on Queen Mother Moore. Can we get? Oh, can we get some? Uh, get some, get some oh, yeah, love, man. Queen Moore, and I'm gonna let everybody go to rest. Um, we up, we got up to 283 people tonight. We appreciate you all hanging with us on a Friday night. Dracky over here drinking a water. You know what I'm saying? And me, I'm drinking real water. But um, not drinking real water. Don't the water looks brown. I don't know what she's drinking over there. Uh, you... I'm drinking up with lyrics and coke, and I'm not ashamed. So. I know that's okay. We'll get mine in a minute. <laughs> well, I, but, well I'm, I'm ashamed that you're gonna put some coke with Uncle Nears. You're gonna keep Uncle Nears and look, Uncle Nears. <laughs> I am poorly and sickly. I can't be drinking straight whiskey. I don't know what it's okay, gonna do. Right. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. She, she, she'll claim the sickly card. Don't that's okay. I'm gonna give it. Okay. Don't, don't do I'm it. Let, I'm gonna let you slide with that with this. But anyway, let's, let's leave. Let's leave on some uh, Queen Mother Moore. In, in, a in, a, in, a, in a contemporary moment when the reparations movement has been in, in many ways invaded and knocked off of the thrust for decades, uh, my friend and colleague Nicole Hannah Jones has just published an article in the New York Times magazine this past Sunday uh, saying that reparations in the United States should be restricted to those who are descended for those who were uh, enslaved here. Uh, say, but we're working on a response to that I mean, because, again, solidarity politics becomes much yeah. more difficult when you don't. Well, let me not get into that. Only reason I, I, I bring I it need, up, I need you to say that part right there. So I'm gonna go ahead. Uh-huh. And go. I mean, no, I'm just, <laughs> no, I'm just saying. But I mean, but there's, it's complicated. There are a lot of different, of yeah. course. You no, know, but but the reason I bring it up is because here we are in 2024, and reparations have become sexy. You know, right. and <laughs> that that's how you know revolution is sexy. Well, go ahead. Well, yeah. exactly, <laughs> and that's how you know we're making progress because again, they got to open it up just to, to incorporate right. just enough resistance to keep the hierarchy going. It's not going to dissuade us. As Jacob Carruthers said, do not snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. We must be a lot closer for them to be to to now say, oh, yeah, we with it, too. Okay, yeah. Y'all talk about what y'all talking about. We're going to keep moving. But that thrust that begins with Africans being captured, that thrust which continues through the 18th, 19th, 20th centuries, that thrust which we see at the Haitian Revolution, which is a form of reparations, because it, internal repair can only be done by us. You can't ask somebody else to, to help you with your humanity. That just mm-hmm. reinforces the idea that somehow they got some ability to define you that you're relying on. So the internal repair is us. But those external expressions where we're going to literally fight our way out of this captivity, that has been going on since we've been captured. But in the 19th century, after the Civil War, in the 1870s, 80s, and 90s, when you see the emergence of the ex-slave mutual relief pension fund, uh, of course, Isaiah Dickinson, Callie House, and the feds who cut their eye teeth on them, incarcerating them, saying they're misappropriating funds. They cut their eye teeth on them before they went after Marcus Garvey in the 1920s. The same mm-hmm. thing on some mm-hmm. ticky-tack BS, and that case should have been thrown out. By the way, his son Julius still fighting for a pardon for his father. We don't give a damn, but the son wants right. it. So to me, Marcus Garvey, Amy Jakes Garvey, Amy Ashwood Garvey, again, these sisters and these brothers did in the community this important work well by the time garvey shows up on the scene in the 20s and 30s of course uh the heydays in the 20s you have out of new iberia louisiana the great oddly mm-hmm. moore the great queen what we call the queen mother moore oddly moore who struggled for reparations from her early days in the 20s and 30s who was deeply involved with intersected with energized by committed to principles of communism socialism she, communist party oddly more was all up in that by the 1960s mm-hmm. she becomes a uh, almost like a a, a legendary kind of iconic figure for those who are now grappling in the black power movement 
So yeah. we're talking about everybody from Carlos Cooks and them coming forward to Amari Obadelli and Gaidi Obadelli. Jackie talking about that idea that we would we would fiend to get those recordings. We know we have Malcolm X's message to the grassroots because Milton and oh Richard were able to, they borrowed recording equipment from a mm. Detroit entrepreneur who had a record company and took that wow. recording qu uh, equipment down to record, and I'm doing like this because they tell the story of how they held it over their heads to record the message to the grassroots. Yep. That, wow. that that album was then, that recording was converted to an album and it was sold, but the recording equipment that belonged to the brother they borrowed it from, the brother they borrowed it from, uh, what was his name? Oh yeah, Barry Gordy. The point oh. is this, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We talking about community, these narratives. Wait, 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 wait. You can't, wait, you can't wait. do that. You can't you do can't. that. No, 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 man, come on. No, hey, hey, but listen, that, that right there, what you just said, that is proof positive as my argument that we all have a role to play yeah. in our people's liberation movement. I don't give a goddamn if you ain't doing nothing, but if like 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 Bunchy Carter said, if you can't do nothing but spit, then motherfucker spit. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? Everybody. You got you gotta really go there, you no know. Question. And if we, we get caught up in talking about what people ain't doing. Come on. Barry Gordy just giving them the equipment right there. Yeah, right. And that's made it possible. Well, okay, that's exactly okay. Right. That's okay, so 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 Kalanji. Oh, this mirror thing is annoying. Um, <laughs> Kalanji, you I get your point, and you're absolutely right. I, I absolutely agree with you. But Dr. Carr, hmm. most of these people today, yes. today, now I'm talking yeah. about folks that 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 our kids coming up in this organizing, I'm calling yes. them my kids because that's how yes. they feel. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, I'm so funny because yes. me and Abdus, uh, when he was alive, his big thing was building community. That that really yeah. was his big thing. Absolutely. Um, yeah. When we built the garden in the front yard, his thing was, well, now people can come out and help you with the garden, Jackie, and this can <laughs> help us build community. Yes. I'm like, but you helped me build it. So you, he's like, no, nah, I ain't gardening no more. No, 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 I don't like it. <laughs> Dude from New Jersey, he don't know what I he likes. Right. The the I built it so that the community could come. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, he That's loved right. the fruit of the labor, but but he didn't want to, <laughs> nah. He'd like but, any but green pepper on the vines. But, <laughs> we we, 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 we got to get back to this. I mean, because I, I mean, like, you know, he just dropped the bomb, Jack. I know. And, 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 and yeah, and I'm just like, well, as one people know, I mean, again, a lot of that's mouth to ear history. That's why we have to be a community. People don't know that. People well, I heard know that. that. I heard that from. Uh, I heard that from their great nephew. We were at the In Cobra conference, and of course, then you then you go looking for it, and you realize, oh, it's been written down. But uh, we were at the In Cobra conference uh, the year before COVID. So that's been 2019. We were in Detroit. John Connie's mm -hmm. again. People talk about Rashida Tlaib and saying, well, why are we worried about Palestine? Black people. Hey, hey. Rashida Tlaib met with in Cobra. In fact, she was there. And the day after we met with Minister Farrakhan, in other words, people, these communities are all together. And in terms of Barry Gordy, of course, uh, Barry Gordy not only did that, he had uh, uh, an enterprise where he would record, record and produce recordings, records of speeches. That's how we know. Well, it's not how we know, but it, that's the material evidence we have now for the I have a dream trope that Prathia Hall introduced to Martin Luther King because Dr. King gave that same I have a dream speech in Detroit. Yes, he like did. A, before, right? The record, yep. and you, you probably got a copy of the record, Jack. Yeah? Anybody has a copy of that record, the, um, uh, the, the speech from Detroit? That was Barry Gordy's company. Right. Barry Gordy is the one who saw who, who printed those records. So there's a whole, you know, like you said, everybody has a role. But but finally, so Queen Mother Moore, and I bring that up because the Republic of New Africa, of course, uh, yeah, embraced her. And, and that's why I mentioned the Henry brothers, who, of course, became Amari and, and Gaidi Obadeli. And of course, then you see the link to Mississippi. But Queen Mother Moore became the center of that reparations thrust. There's that famous clip of her at the uh, meeting in Gary, the, the, the conference in Gary, mm -hmm. 1954. I hope, I haven't seen the uh, Shirley Chisholm film yet with Regina King, but again, if Netflix is involved, I'm sure there's some, some mess, but I hope they have a glimpse of the politics because when Shirley Chisholm ran for president, we know the Congressional Black Caucus didn't back her. Again, to, to go back to the earlier conversation, Jackie, that you opened us up 
to, to, to really to center, which we have to center that internal dynamic, the patriarchy, even then, mm -hmm. these men in the Congressional Black Caucus. And uh, I'm thinking about, although even that becomes complicated because you got Ron Dellums, you got, I mean, there's a whole politic at play there. Shirley Chisholm doesn't play a role in the 74 conference right. that is taking place at, at, at Gary, Indiana, Richard Hatcher and them, which is interesting because you could say, well, you know, is this a question of gender? Is it a question of patriarchy? That's at play. What's also, mm -hmm. however, at play is relationships because Shirley Chisholm didn't have the kind of relationships, but who is there, who is centered? Well, actually at the opening night, Betty Shabazz and, and, and Coretta Scott King open. They're on the podium. If you see the film uh, Nation Time, it's the film on the uh, on the 74 mm -hmm. uh, Black Power Conference. You see them there. And then you see Queen Mother Moore, who is there passing out stuff for reparations. And Queen Mother Moore is riotous. She is elect. She's handing out stuff saying, we need our reparations. Don't you want your reparations? Look what this mm -hmm. man did. He messed us up. He took everything from us. Look at me. I can't even have an afro. My hair won't even stand up. This, he took my color. Y'all, don't y'all want your reparations? I mean, Queen Mother Moore is hilarious. She said, I can't even get my afro. I want my reparations. Queen Mother Moore lived until uh i forget when she passed somebody could look it up but uh it must have been it had to have been maybe the early 90s because i met her in the 80s the late 80s when she came to columbus ohio thanks to the african center for study and worship and then by the time i was in new york for a little while in fact that's where i came to first world for the first time we probably overlapped brother this would have been 1989 i'm, I'm sure i'm sure yeah, so queen was mother moore was night she, she yeah, it was 1997 um matter Damn. of fact she, it's she was close. yeah she was close to 100 because she was born i think she was 91 yeah. uh i mean 99 she was born that's in 1898 right. that's right so, and I, I, i'll tell yeah. you why because i went to her funeral you know her funeral was in harlem yeah, 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 yeah. Her yeah. was in Harlem on uh, on Malcolm X near 116th, one of those churches, say, near where Collins funeral. I, I was going, I was going to say that was it over there because I know Collins was over by by 116th, right? Or That's was exactly it, uh, right. And then, I think it was the yeah, same. I, I can't, I can't. Yeah, I, I'm thinking it was. It was the big church on the corner. The big church on the corner. That's exactly right. Yeah, yeah right. right. I, I was at Collins' uh, uh, funeral. That was oh, in, yeah. was it 2000 2001. Yeah, so I'm sure we probably was in at we first probably, world I'm at the sure same we've been time. In a lot of same places, brother. Yeah, but the yeah. reason, the reason you, I you probably was ignoring me though. I was I was a low. No, no, you, no. I was in the cut, brother. You know, <laughs> the autumn funeral. But but I tell you what, and I end with this with Queen Mother Moore. I remember that day because here this sister, and of course, you know who performed the funeral was the Orthodox, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. Right on, because right on. You know, because she was Ethiopian Orthodox. This is her thing. She went land in Ethiopia. I mean, our part of our repair means not only the repair of those who were enslaved in the United States, but a pan-African linkage. There's a new book on Queen Mother Moore. I think Ashley Farmer. I don't know Dr. Farmer. This is University of Texas. She's written a book on Queen Mother Moore. It's coming out soon. I want to say she might have even been interviewed at, at one of the shows at BPM. I'm yeah, not yeah, I think I think she might have been interviewed yeah, on the morning good. show. Yeah, I think, I'm, um, Dr. CBS and Layla might introduce. Okay, in, in, I'm not. I'm really case. not looking forward to it, except to see what sources that are used, because the same rule I will assume. I don't. I'll give her the benefit of the doubt till I read it, but because right. people are not in political formation, because they are right. academics, they tend to miss the spirit of people, yeah. and so you know. Yeah, yeah, for example, yeah. these books that are written about Black nationalists, Pan Africanists, and they write these very meticulous books. They're looking at the documents. They think the stuff's in the archive, which cracks me up. Anyway, we, 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 and, man, listen, yeah, we're, we're, we're working on two books right now with some ac with academic press, and the thing is, they want to switch it around and like, look, no, that's not what what we said. We, you know, what what we said is what it is. It's not what nah, they, I, what they you think the Academy wanted to sound like. They That's not reality. Well, they where, where did it. you get first from? I was there. But anyway. Exactly. <laughs> no, 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 no. But see, this, uh, you, you're raising a very important point, brother, because. Ain't no footnote or end well, note. <laughs> right, right. It's mouth to ear. And, yeah. and, and not only not <laughs> only that, you know, uh, Anson Thompson used to call them slave rebellion reports. 
Mm. He was like, these books are slave rebellion reports. They want to right. tell you who said what to who, when, right. when did it happen, so that you can perfect your ability to suppress it the next time you see it. Right. That's right. Anyway, That's right. I'm, I'm not accusing any of these academics, particularly the black ones, of having that as their purpose, because I think their purpose is basically to prove to somebody else that they're smart. Because uh, I'm like, you know who you should talk to, though? In, in regards to Queen Mother Moore, I interviewed uh, Muhammad Ahmed, Max Stanford, probably oh, yeah. about 15 years ago, and oh, he yeah. went in on his relationship to her and just, you know what I'm saying, just in New Orleans. And, and I mean, it was just phenomenal because he probably gave me the, the best or the, the most insight out of all the folks that I've known that have known her, but just from him being a student. When you have someone like that, an OG, with that much you know, uh, wait and to see how they revere and how they break down, you know, in, in a, in a most organic way, no it, it's a whole nother, it's a whole nother experience, man. So no I'm sorry, but go ahead. Well, no, 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 please don't apologize because I agree with you. And, and Baba Max would have a unique insight because in terms of those quote unquote radical movements, you know, of course with Ram, he was at the right. center. You know, I, I know Max Stanford probably about 25 years when he first came back to Philly to teach at Temple. Temple. You know, we right. worked we worked to get him that to get him that position. Nate Norman was chair yeah. of Africa State at the time. And that man, you're right. We got we, Muhammad Ahmed is 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 incredible. In fact, I was glad to see that platform. Uh, the platform had uh had Tony Montero on what's that? Tony Montero, that unreconstructed Marxist. Many an hour we done spent having arguments and discussions. I mean, but it's important because we have to have that kind of stuff to sharpen us. But anyway, uh, so I'll finish right. with my at that church, whatever whatever the name of that church is, I the can't minister, think of the name, but Farrakhan came. And again, you know, thinking about women, the whole, you know, there have been some excellent, some excellent books written about women in the nation of Islam. But as I always say, and this is somebody who I was greatly influenced by Ava Muhammad, who was another recent ancestor. Her daughter Absolutely. just graduated from Howard in the spring. You know, mm -hmm. I always say, okay, given the challenges within the nation of Islam, we have to, again, Jackie, you raise this very importantly, the internal, the, the internal work that we need to perfect or come as close to perfection as we can for our organizations has to be done. It's difficult, though, and I just uh, ran into uh, the sister who leads the MGT and one of the ministers. These are elders. They were. I was in Columbia, as I said, for Lister Bill Middleton. That Abyssinian. It just came to me. It was Abyssinian. Yeah. Abyssinians. You know, talking about Abyssinian. Yeah. Where, uh, there, there was what? Was there it was but? What's the church? That's what it had mean, John Henry Clark's funeral. Right. But I think it was. I mean, I'm almost certain it was Abyssinian, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Abyssinian was in the right? Uh, Dr. Ben's, no, no, the Abyssinians up, you know, that's up on 130, what, 135th? Right, 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 right. No, this one, I don't know. That, well, that maybe I'm off, but I thought it was yeah, Abyssinian. Maybe, but, maybe, maybe, but, but, uh, but yeah, no, no, the, 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 the ones on maybe Queen Mother, well, the Nation of Islam was this. I always ask people when I'm, particularly if I'm at an academic conference, which I don't, you know, I'm academic conferences, I don't necessarily go to a lot of them. When they roast in the Nation of Islam, I'm saying, okay, so then all the women in the Nation of Islam are stupid or dupes, right? I dare you to say that to the MGT. I want you to say that to Ava Muhammad. I want you to say that Mama Christine Johnson, the architect of the uh, Clara Muhammad schools. I guess they just all stupid, huh? because or, or just or just somehow under. I'm like, don't do that, because what is your objective? I know you want to tell your master about these things and show that you're smart, but at the end of the day, if you don't know enough about, I mean, some of the some of the most powerful sisters I've ever encountered in my life, Callie X and her husband, brother Howard in Columbus, Ohio, the Nation of Islam, the great Abel Muhammad. I told it anyway, I don't get into that. But anyway, the point is this: Minister Farrakhan spoke at Queen Mother Moore's funeral. And I'll never forget, he gave a eulogy. The eulogy was Mother is Love. And he went through the life of Queen Mother Moore and he talked about how at the heart of her life and her practice and the reparations movement, the Garvey movement, everything she did at the heart of her practice was the was her unswerving love for our people. And if we keep that at the center, we can figure the rest of it out. So when I think of Queen Mother Moore, I think about I think about that. She loved our people. She loved our people through the fighting end. So. Hey man, I love no. being here with y'all. I mean, we didn't, y'all don't be playing. Nah, and, I, and I, I'm yeah, grateful. We, and I, one more time. And I, 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 I kept everybody up, and it, this is, uh, you know, we are grateful for 
you all coming on sharing the wealth of knowledge uh ride a shotgun for me thank you jackie uh ride a shotgun with me thank you um, jackie. jackie jackie nice and toasted right now she don't care i see what she laid back and she like this right here <laughs> that's that's not the jackie y'all saw on the, on, the, on the couple shows prior to this one right? don't get it twisted this is R S T D. we do it different over here yeah but um i want to thank uh you know uh -huh. the, the chat for coming on board we're up to 291 uh live viewers on a friday night 10 42 p.m and we're going to be clocking out because we got things to do you know yeah. what i'm saying but uh look for yes 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 make sure you check out uh this is my third rstv this week uh check out the Ooh. joint i did with uh yes with ayana gregory check out the piece i did that on that was so Mill. good yeah. oh y'all matter of fact she's, she's performing in silver springs tomorrow y'all check her out that's right that's um, right she's out on leisure world right the auditorium in leisure world tomorrow night yes yes that's yes so if y'all in that area go check out our sister For one woman show. ayana Daughter um, absolutely so we have uh you know the Imam Jamil piece we did uh did that a couple days ago and this piece right here I need y'all to share this because the thing is you know oftentimes you know we, our, our work gets lost in the sauce no and I need folks to get certain information because you know knowledge is king or queen or Pharaoh as we talked about earlier you know what I mean? so, <laughs> Ruler so the stand, people, right right the queen without, without a doubt Yes, yes, but stay on the right side of the barricades. Greg, I appreciate you coming on, Jackie. Hey, right, and um, let me, let me say this to you before yes. we leave, brother. Your interviews and your conversation, particularly with elders, are invaluable because that is that that is that mouth to ear narrative, and that displaces any books. And so, I just want to thank you, brother, for years of that dialogue with elders, the elders that you have brought into dialogue. That's how we keep our memory together. So just thank you, brother. Thank you for this space. And thank you thank both, you. man, for hanging out with us tonight. I, I, I appreciate it. And it is it is a, a blessing. I don't take it lightly. I the see. fact that that um our OGs, our elders, and many who are now ancestors, the fact that they would even talk to a brother like me from the projects in Bridgeport, Connecticut on South End. You yes, understand sir. what I'm saying? It is yes, it is an absolute blessing. So I don't yes. take it lightly. And again, we're grateful. Thank you all to the chat for even, you know, showing us this love, you know, for you saying it's worth staying up late with us tonight. I know that's right. Right on. So I'm going to let you all go because y'all been trying to go for the last hour, but I was like, F that. What, 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 how the song used to go, funk that. Anyway, <laughs> love y'all. Be safe. I love y'all too. Yeah, we'll see y'all next time. Yes. I'm Look not out. pressing the in stream button. I'm not. You better not. <laughs> Listen, we we will check you out. That's what happened in the first show. I gotta tell y'all. But uh <laughs> we will we appreciate you all. We will be doing this uh once a month. We're gonna coordinate with Jackie and Greg because I think this is necessary. It's a good exercise. Yeah, I'm telling you, I ain't asking you. But anyway, <laughs> just, just, <laughs> exactly. Okay, okay. <laughs> this this is what revolution is all about. Thank you all for continuing yeah. to fight. And um, you know, we're gonna win in spite of in spite of ourselves. All right, have a good night, Jackie, and everyone else. Be safe. And I'm going to end this with how we started it with a little bit of Brenda Fossey straight out of South Africa. I think she's Ooh, necessary. Nice. Y'all yes. need to hear her. Okay, mm -hmm. be safe. One Peace. love. Ellie.
Well, here we go. We appreciate it, Jackie. We out of here. One love. I, I ain't expect to pop. Right. I look like <laughs> anyway, we'll talk in a minute. Be safe. Peace.